Good morning, pleasant welcome to Liberia today on LN TV. Today is the 22nd day of June. The year remains 2021. Hey, what's up, guys? How you guys doing? Well, we're wonderful this morning. Of course, like you said, today is Wednesday, June 22. Of right. course, uh, it's 2022, and mm -hmm. gradually we're going on. I'm very good this morning. I'm Yiga. Well, I am okay, <coughs> perfectly okay. Thanks to God for giving me the grace. And yeah, it's June 21, 22nd, and we're celebrating a great day today, which was yesterday, right? Of course. Uh, and so, Titi, what is it from your end? How did you spend the night? My night was cool as yours, I believe. And today we're celebrating Universal Yoga Day. Like uh, Constance said, yesterday was the day, which was the 21st of June. But we're celebrating it today. And so the theme for today is all about yoga. We'll be talking about it. We will have Lisa White with us in studio this morning. This is one person who is doing classes in yoga. Uh, you know about yoga is that physical issues and spiritual practice. We're going to be practicing that this morning. It's all about you being faith spiritually, physically. We'll talk more about that uh, when we're talking about our theme of the day. But don't forget, we also have that one story from the county. What's up with Lofa? We're taking a look at Lofa County this morning, where elections will soon be, you know, held there. Our correspondent, Topatano, will be talking to us to tell us how prepared the National Elections Commission is to carry out elections in that county. So we will put a spotlight on Lofa County this morning as we talk about that one story from the county we also have this morning for you what well we have our uh, sports will be coming on later the owner 17 team is out of country and they will be participating in uh, an international uh friendlies of course in austria we we'll talk about that later on i know there's going to be a news callable at the ats very good uh, discussion to hold this morning on Liberia today. We also have a review of the local dailies, and so all of the top stories uh, making news in, in Liberia and elsewhere will bring you a review of that. Remember, did I'll, you say news call bore at the ATS? Certainly, certainly, there's going to be a news call bore at the ATS, okay. uh, you know, and, and that renovation is ongoing. We're going to tell you uh, the cost attached to uh, the uh, renovation of the news call bore at ATS. We also have uh, our motivational talk, it's going to come to you this morning. I know uh, Dr. Bolly is, is prepared this morning to inspire us again. Waking up this morning is, is always a good thing to, to be be inspired to have that new sense of her mindset as you go about uh, your everyday hustle and so uh, we encourage you to keep watching what is it from your end customs well we we have today in history that's going to take you to the world of history that whatever that happened back then we're going to tell you all of what we need you need to know all of what we have to tell you we also have the entertainment for you, entertainment news who doesn't want to know what's trending in the social world definitely social we are social media. we need to know what's trending in the also we have the health tips that is actually relating to the topic on today so basically yeah that's what we have you can so, join us we're here we're not going anywhere all of you who are watching us via social media would like to say good morning to you please stay with us this is liberia today let's go for our motivational talk and we'll be right back stay with us please
Hello, my friend, and welcome to another motivational segment right here on Liberia Today. I am Dr. Charles Bolly, your motivator. Are you ready for today's edition? I hope you are. And if you have a pen or a copy book, pen, paper, and copy book, sometimes it's important to take notes. Don't forget about that. You attend some important segments, maybe workshop or stuff. Take important notes. So uh, perhaps I didn't say that previously, but I want to let you know now that some of the ideas are the ones helping people around the world, including myself. So what I'm sharing with you are things that are helping other people. So welcome to this segment. We hope that you pick something from here today that you will use. Oh, today's edition is at my heart. I mean, at my chest. I love it so much. Oh, yes. If you have a young person there, maybe from 13 to 35 or even above, call them around. I'm about to say something interesting for, for them. All right? So today, actually, I'm, I want to talk to young people. Okay? Young people. Uh, I mean, an adult, you can also take some messages from what we are about to say. But basically, I want to talk to, to, to you in particular as a young person. So I'm trying to talk to you basically on a short topic, the significance of youthfulness, meaning what makes it important. Oh, I'm a youth, I'm a youth. It's not just I'm a youth, I'm a youth, okay? What makes it important? Sometimes we tend to despise our youth. Bible says, do not despise your youth. When you're, not doing, when you're doing something you're not supposed to do as a young person, you are despising your youth. So we are talking to you today about the significance of you. But before that, there is Commonwealth Young Achievers. They define youth in this way. It's years, you know, it's just an acronym. They took the word youth as an acronym and divided. Why? Years of vigor and freshness. Oh, as a young person, today you have strength. You can run from here to the junction and beyond that, you still, you still have strength. That strength will not stay forever. And then potential, you have a lot of potential, you have dreams. Ocean of potentials. And then unending efforts and enthusiasm, oh, you have a lot of energy. Everybody wants your energy. And of course, sometimes you, you face some realities of life, maybe tears of hardships. Oh, yes, then there is a hope for tomorrow. It's youth. So youth... It's a period that is so critical in one's life. Somebody says, what happens to you as a youth? What you believe in as a youth will carry you for the rest of your life. You didn't hear me. I am an educational psychologist as a training, uh, in training, uh, as area of training. Let me get it right. And in psychology, we, we, we study human mind and mental processes. The brain is still developing up to age 25. Do you know that? Oh, yes. It has been discovered that your brain is true, is still going through development from, from that young period, from zero to 25 years. After that development is done, my friend, it's difficult for some things to change. I'm not telling you it can't change you. Don't get me wrong. I'm saying it's difficult for certain habits you develop in your youth to change later on. So what am I talking about? I'm trying to tell you how important your youthful time is in this edition. As a young person, do not waste your energy. It is a period for you to be serious about life. No, don't say, I'm saying young, I'm saying young, I'm saying young. You're moving here and there, you're not doing things for yourself. You're staying young. Before you look, you will be close to 30, and there are some things you should have done. If you have not done them, your life will not be straight. So I'm talking to you that in your youth, what you believe in, what you are doing as a young person is likely to carry you for the rest of your life. So I'm challenging you today as a young person following this program to rise up to the occasion and be that person your country wants you to be. That country wants you to be a giant, a, a person who will do something for that nation, something positive. We are counting on you. So what is it significant? I just told you before that your brain continues to develop until age 25. After the development, you now have habits. And most of the time, these habits control your life. And to break 
a habit sometimes can be very difficult for some of us. So youth is a nucleus of human existence. It's the foundation. It's the, it's the major part. It's a period where you start making decisions for yourself and controlling some things for yourself. And you can't just continue to rely on your parents. Everything your parents must do, it. they must send you to school, they must get you copy. You can't even use your hands. You have to begin to put yourself together. It's the place you have some chance now to even decide which school you go to or what clothes you want buy or what, th things like that. Okay, you have some level of choice. Again, you also have strength. Your energy as a youth must not be wasted on a checkerboard. You didn't hear me. Don't waste your energy on checkerboard all the time or maybe just movies here and there playing around every time you just moving. No, my friend, time is going. Time is going. Time is going. You need to put yourself together. You need to use your energy. You have a dream. Don't wait. Let me finish college first. If you have certain dream, now start doing something in your community. Start doing something in your school. We are meant to be doing something. Oh, my friend, we have to stop waiting. You wait for everything. Now, everything you wait for, you can continue to wait for everything. So we have so much given to us, the strength, the energy. Put your life together as a young person. So basically, I just want to use today's motivation, since we have bulk of our population as young people, to talk to you as a young person, as a young man. To make sure, my friend, you are in the very critical period of your life. What you believe in, what you are doing right now, you are likely to take that into other home. Maybe too much of drinking, too much of more business, or this, that. If you start doing those things in so much way in, in, in your youthful period, you are likely to carry those things in your adulthood. And in adulthood, remember, you have other challenges there. So you're not trying to correct your bad behavior. You now establish during your youthful period. And then you have the challenges in your adulthood that you are trying to face. Life can be hard like that. So I'm encouraging you, begin soon. Begin soon. And list yourself in the area you want to become. That kind of person you are dreaming about. Today, begin to use your youthful energy to read that book. Begin to use your youthful energy to start that small business if you can. Begin to use your youthful energy to start that particular small activity in your school. Don't waste your youthful energy saying that there is no work to do. Are you serious? There is always work to do. Just sit down and think about what you can do with your life. We hope that today's segment are uh, trying to motivate you have said something to you. I particularly decided to talk to uh, young people as a young man myself that you can do more. You can achieve more. You can be more. You can be able to live your dream. The kind of person you want to be, you can be. It doesn't matter whether you are from poor family or not. Somebody said, you did not choose being born in a poor family, but when you die there, you are responsible. Start putting yourself together. Don't say I'm too young to do this. Don't say I'm too young to, 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 to write a book. In other countries, 17 years or 16 years old are leaders of some entities in their country. What about you? I'm challenging you, I'm challenging you right now to do your best so that your existence is going to count. Again, thank you so much for following this edition of Liberia Today, the motivational segment of Liberia Today. We hope that we've said something that, have, that has inspired you or that has encouraged you. Continue to follow this program and other programs on this platform. Until I come your way next time with another interesting topic, my name is Charles Bolly, your motivator. Do have yourself a wonderful time, but don't forget, give no excuses to yourself for doing what you're supposed to do. Bye-bye. I love you. The significance of youthfulness is always important that whilst you're growing and exactly around your youth days, you'll able to uh, have a sense of reasoning, try to develop your mindset because whatever 
is going to be developed in the days of uh, your youth. Uh, your youth days, of course, is going to take you to your adulthood. That's why it's important to plan and plan adequately so that when you are an adult, you are able to face uh, the challenges in life. A very good motivational talk this morning. And so we are back here uh, to talk about the theme of the day. And like we said, it's International Yoka Day 2022. Well, it's the time that we have a sense of reasoning, being uh, distressed, of course, I'll give you that exact uh, mindset of uh, having some of what is the tension in the body uh, corrected. But our team members are also here this morning. So I'd like to start out with TT. Of course, this morning we're here and, and uh, keep watching because it's going to be a different set of broadcasts this morning. That's why you see at a at, at certain point we'll have TT and, and Constant on the other side whilst I'm on this side, and, and we're having a very good conversation this morning, Titi. Absolutely. Um, it's all about exercise, but I hear you talk. It's also yoga also is not only about exercise, but it's a way to discover a sense of oneness within yourself, uh, the world, and nature. So it's not only about exercise. And I told you that Lisa White is going to be here uh, this uh, morning, and we're going to yoga uh, together. But this whole thing about yoga is from, you know, India. The Indian people are people who love, you know, that kind of exercise. They believe that it puts them in a place where, you know, they discover themselves. They discover who exactly they are. And this day, uh, we would like to tell you that the International Day of, of Yoga aims to raise awareness worldwide of the many benefits of practicing yoga. I know in Liberia, Constance, have you heard about yoga in Liberia? Have you ever attempted attending a yoga class before? Mm, no, not uh, having uh, done such, but personally, I have done mine. And I feel like personally, yeah. What is that supposed to me, mean? Me doing it in my own cupboard there in my room, you know, all alone. But instead of the class, right? Oh, okay. So, I, so you have an understanding of yeah, what right. yoga so is. So the fact <coughs> that you are able to do yoga it makes you connect with your inner self. Okay. And being able to meditate on your your well-being as an individual is very much important. Absolutely. Because if you're able to connect with your spirit, your soul. Your, your inner self, mm -hmm. it makes you identify your surrounding and how well you can improve yourself. I know that. So doing yoga, <laughs> my first attempt was horrible. And to every other person <laughs> whose first attempt is always horrible, you feel like you your boom is about to break Crack. out. And that is <laughs> what's going to happen to some of us here this morning. You know, yeah. usually, I you know, the gym I used to go to, that's uh, the, the UN gym. Lisa is always there. She always has a class there. Hmm. But anytime I attempt that class, <laughs> right. it's, you know, a kind of... Uh, a different day for me so and this morning I'm going to attempt that because we're going to talk all about yoga we're going to talk about you know mm. the uh, benefits of yoga yeah, and maybe you haven't heard about you know what yoga is and you have an op opportunity now this morning to hear from the teacher the professor herself and she will be practicing this morning showing you you know what we can do as a family as a people to kind of you know, like Constance said, connect with ourselves, with our inner selves. I don't know about uh, um, um, uh, uh, Mr. Urukwe <laughs> Yega. Have you ever, you know, had an opportunity to attempt that the way you don't even like to exercise? <laughs> Well, I, I think it's going to be uh, a very good experience. I for ask me you this a question, morning. my man. Answer the question. Don't, I, don't tell me how it would be wonderful. I ask you a simple question. Have you ever? Well, well, I, I haven't attempted. I haven't attempted. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> it's going to be a very good experience for me. Are this you morning. going to do that this morning? Are you going I'm to attempt going to that this morning? Well, no, no, no. I, he's not. I, no, no. Mm. The, the point of uh, you know doing a yoga and mm. and having. Uh, no matter what come over uh, to help the public understand, you know, it's, it's going to be a time that people maybe will get motivated and think that... What about you? I'm also, because the fight that she's <laughs> going to be here and, and displaying they is going to be a time that, you know, Yeka could gain admiration for Yoka. And every morning I'm waking up, That's right. I'm, I'm just up and, and doing something uh, in, in said direction. But again, it's, it's for humanity as we're uh, observing uh, this international day. Like Constance said, 
is the time that we try to relieve our mind of the different circumstances, the different kinds of situations that we are confronted with. It's just the time to maybe stress up and, and, and ensure that Yes, I'm, I'm physically fit. That's why, Titi, this morning, uh, we are not going to bring uh, our, uh, you know, regular exercise period because we will have somebody who's going to be here and, and, and just giving us a new sort of exercise, a new kind of way that we can wake up in the morning and, and just renew our mindset so that we can face the realities of life. And, and so that's that's going to be it this morning. Great. And so before we let, go back to Yega, let me just read something. The resolution notes the importance of individuals and populations making healthier choices and following lifestyle patterns that foster good health. In this regard, the World Health Organization has also urged its member states to help their citizens reduce physical in activity, which is among the top 10 leading causes of death worldwide and a key risk factor for non-communicable disease such as cardiovascular disease, cancer, and diabetes, uh, uh, sorry. So now you know that, you know, yoga is very important. Very important. Sometimes, yeah. most times, people don't take exercise, you know, seriously, but mm. it is a very, very, very important part of your life. Like, if you want to live long, you have to exercise. That, that's <coughs> what it, it starts from India. You know how pe people in India are very conscious about their health. In fact, the fact that a lot of the medicine we take are from India, mm -hmm. considering that fact. So I actually like the theme of the day that says a yoga for humanity. Uh, who Everyone wants to be healthy, but it's everyone doing what it takes to be healthy. That is, is another the thing, the biggest <laughs> question, because all of us always want to stay healthy. We don't want to go to the hospital. Exactly. But how many of us take up our time to exercise, to do something to keep the body fit, to keep the body on course, and to keep the body running? And, you know, always I say this to Yiga that, you know, it's a very important to exercise right. and to take your exercise very seriously because it's a part of life. It makes you live long. But we'll talk more about that when uh, Lisa White is in uh, studio this morning with us shortly. Yes, uh, <laughs> very well. When she's here, it's going to be the time we'll take uh, more of the time this morning to talk about uh, yoga and, and that kind of exercise that maybe Yegat is going to get adopted <laughs> so very shortly. But again, like, like uh, Titi said this morning, uh, we are going to have a spotlight on Lofat County. Remember the uh, issue of by-election in Lofat County has been uh, uh, something pending. And so where are we in terms of the conduct of the Lofat County Senator by-election? You know, it's coming at a point that the uh, the, the, the election of Brandon Samoka was uh, nullified and, of course, given rise to another by-election in, in that part of uh, the country. And so uh, the, uh, all, all eyes are now focused on Lofi County. The legislature uh, passed a resolution authorizing uh, the conduct of the election, sometimes uh, in, in a short while, of course, and, and people have been trooping to Lofat County. How is it there now for us? We will definitely go to the line and, and talk with our correspondent Topa Tano this morning. But we want you to keep watching when we are back. We will be posted at the time uh, to bring you the conversation. That one story from the county this morning, our concentration is on the conduct of the Lofat County Senatorial by-election. You know, uh, sometimes ago we spoke about those candidates that weren't qualified by the National Elections Commission uh, to participate in these processes. How are they coping down? Where are we in terms of uh, the conduct of the election? All that we need to know was the build up to the conduct of the election, the senatorial by election in Lofat County. All of those things I, I just in one full package for you this morning when we have on the line uh, Topa Tanun, uh, our correspondent, to bring us up to speed with what is 
happening in Lofad County and the different uh, political activities. I'm, I'm told the National Elections Commission have been holding some discussions with individuals who are participating. It's good to maintain the peace whilst we observe this uh, democratic tendency in, in the country and so it's going to be a good time to talk about all of those things this morning on Liberia today. I, I, I should, do we have uh, do we have uh, Topatano on the line now? Okay, so we'll take the clip from Lofa County. Uh, we'll take that clip for you to watch. And when uh, we have completed that, then we we'll go to the line and talk with uh, Topatano this morning. Keep watching Liberia Today on LNTV. Well, welcome back to Liberia today on LNTV. Sorry, you know, we can't bring you that clip. We're having some technical glitches this morning, so it's a difficult thing to bring you the clip, but we have, you know, our correspondent, Topatano on the line. Um, we all know that on the 28th of this month, there will be a special election in uh, Lofa County. Like Rukwe Yega told you, um, Browning Samukai was elected um, a senator of that county, but because he had to go through <coughs> another rigmarrow at the court, um, he was disqualified from uh, serving as uh, a senator in that county. As a result of that, um, there has been um, another court case at the um, <laughs> Temple of Justice uh, between uh, or amongst opposition political parties, uh, that is uh, the CPP and how they could field a candidate. The Unity Party wanted to field her own candidate, but that brouhaha at the court has also been, you know, concluded and Unity Party was given an opportunity to field a candidate in Lofa County by election. So despite everything, the national election, the, the legislature now has given the go ahead. And so the 28th of this month, and it's just next week, we will be, people of Lofa County will be going to elections. So. We need to talk about this because yesterday the National Elections Commission declared campaign open. We know that, you know, there are several candidates who are participating in the elections. We want to talk to Topatano this morning to know exactly a little bit of all of those who are, you know, participating in those in that election in uh, Lofa County. Topatano, do we have Topa on the line now? Topa, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Titi. Good morning. Tanu, can you please, uh, you know, position your camera properly so that, you know, I see your face and the people who are watching see you also. 
um, please position your camera properly. Good morning, Tanu. Good morning, Titi. Good morning. How are you? Okay, I think you're better now. You're better. You're better. Yeah. How are you? Well, I'm up and doing great this morning. Thank God for Wonderful. the game of life. So, how is Lofa this morning? The weather is good this morning. Uh, we woke up uh, with more strength, more vigor to ensuring that we follow the process. And we are all up this morning. Thank God for the strength as we'll be able to go about following the activities as well. So, yes, Lofa is relatively good this morning. So I know that the, the, the elections in Lofa County um, has been delayed, and, you know, with the Brian and Samuka situation and uh, the Wurubalu, everybody wanting, you know, Lofians wanting a representative. I know we've been in conversation with some of the, the, the lawmakers and senators of Lofa County and even the people of Lofa County calling for, you know, uh, somebody to represent them because that void had been there. Now that they're going to elections in um, uh, a few days, are people excited about this? Is the momentum high in the county? Sure, the momentum is high and there are a lot of excitement amongst uh, the citizens across the county from what we've gathered so far. Uh, just as you said, when the case was at the court and the process was placed on hold, there were a lot of people who at the time uh, lost appetite for the process. But since the court came up with the ruling uh, mandating the Elections Commission to continue with the process, uh, the momentum has continued to grow as we speak. And the opening of campaign as well has, has, has made it much more uh, intense. Uh, because right now what we see happening is that these political parties, independent candidates, they've got PA system, they're moving around, ensuring that at the dying minute, they can be able to convince the electorate as to why they think they should be voted for. So, thankfully, we still see it being pro uh, peaceful. And we haven't heard of any situation where you can have people clashing and so forth. But the process is on and the momentum has grown higher than what it was before. Okay, I need you to position your camera properly. Again, I'm not seeing your eyes. I want to look in your eyes and talk to you this morning, Tanu. Um, the question I want to ask is, you know, how many persons are participating in uh, which parties do they come from? So we have six qualified candidates in the race. And f four are independent candidates. And then the other two are on political party tickets. Who are these we have, people? Uh, so the two who are on the political party tickets, we have Honorable Galakpai Wuzi Kotimai, former superintendent of the county, who is on the ticket of the opposition unity party. And then we also have former Senator Sumo Galakpai Kupi, who is on the ticket of the People's Unification Party, that's the PUP. And then the rest of the four to include Tanukoli Momo Saros, Councillor Joseph Pato Jala, um, you have Dr. Bian Seman, and then you have Representative Mayamun Bian Fufana. They four are all independent candidates in this election. So, what do we know about uh, these people who are contesting? What are their histories? Just give me a minute about each person. Do we have how many female candidates do we have contesting? Uh, we have one female who is Honorable Mayamun Bian Fufana. Okay, just give me a gist of, you know, who these people are. Just a minute about each person. So to begin with, uh, Tanukoli Momo Saros, who is an independent uh, candidate, is the CEO of what is now referred to as Liberia's premier private security agency, that SIGA, the Security Expert Guard Agency of Liberia. Uh, he has been into that sector for years, and I'm told that he comes to the race following a court from his kinsmen uh, to be able to uh, contest in these elections. And that request, I'm told, he generally accepted uh, from the people of Lofa as a means of ensuring that uh, Lofa can be on par in terms of development. And he is a graduate, in fact, of the Abraham 
uh, B. Bambagida Graduate School and, and, and of, of International Studies at the University of Liberia and has also worked with the NSA um, here, here in, in country. You have so, but I still need you to position your camera properly. I'm still not, you know, I'm just seeing your, I'm sorry, your nose and your mouth, but I'm not seeing your eyes. Uh, you need to position. Okay, I think you, you're much better now. Okay. Okay. Okay, now, right? Sorry for that. Is it, is it, is it much better? So, but I, I, I hope I'm not losing you. Is it is it is it much better? Okay, I think you're much better. Just leave it as it is a little bit. I think you're still in a corner there, but uh, at least I can see your face. You're good there. You're good right there. Okay. So I was I was talking about Honorable Mayamu Bian Fufana, who comes mm -hmm. from Tusu Town um, in Kwadiboni District, and is the current lawmaker of District Number Four. At the 54th National Legislature, and she is serving her second term as representative for District 4. She also contested, of course, uh, uh, in the by election that was in 2020, and though she did not succeed, but thought to come back during this uh, election again. And uh, she has some background in media studies uh, as well, uh, I'm told. Even when we had the ELRV here, she was one of the staff there that was prior to the liberal civil crisis. And so she is in this election as the lone female uh, for now. Honorable Subo Galakwai Kupi served before as senator of the county. He's a Russian trained economist and has vast knowledge when it comes to the economy. Uh, the, the economy. And so he comes back to the election According to him, people, the people have asked him to come back because during his stay at the, at the Senate, there were a lot of positive things. According to him, happened. right? According yes, to according him, to the him. people have asked him to come back. Precisely. Okay. They have asked him to come back on grounds that there are a lot of positives that he saw when he served as So as why Senator. did they let him go? Well, again, that's the biggest question that we have asked over and over. And some of those who responded to the question said it was a mistake they made. And others said, no, it was not a mistake. They are equally Letting him go was a mistake? <laughs> well, th that was some said. Has, that have was you some spoken have with said. him uh, to ask him why, if he thinks that the people were asking him to come back, why then did they let him go? Has he ever responded to that question? not directly he hasn't given a direct response to that question as to why they let him go okay yeah so who else do we so have there moving moving on you have um honorable galapai koti mai who is on the ticket of the opposition leader party koti mai served the county here as superintendent during the presidency of madam ellen johnson salif meaning he has worked across the county. And I, after that, uh, he went to the GSA. He did some work there as one of the deputies. And just after that, he came back to the private sector, mm. opened this peanut butter factory in, in Zorza district in the Konya Inn. And that's what he's been involved in. Is it still functional? Time. Well, um, I'm told that it's not functional right now. And why we are yet to find out as to why you should be asking these people all of these questions Tanu. correct so they have they haven't been in county for some time now right it's good that they are they are they have come back to county and i know we're going to ask all of these questions especially with the kind of a debates that are ongoing right now these are questions that i know uh, the, the public going to be asking as to why and so he, he comes to the race um Next is um, Councillor Joseph Jala. Councillor Joseph Jala is a lawyer. Of course, uh, he has been working with the Central Bank of Liberia uh, as, as a legal person at that end over the years. And he comes from the Kola Home Belt, uh, the Bandit Chiefdom, if you may. Uh, he has made attempt three times. This is the fourth time, and he's very optimistic 
that this time around he is going to come victorious in the election uh, on grounds that you, 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 if you look at all of the candidates in the race out of the six he's the only candidate that comes from lower lofa so what lower, does that mean uh, does lower lofa yeah. have all of the votes they don't have all of the vote but if the people of lower lofa can resolve uh, mm. because lower lofa comprises of Olahun, Koya, and that of Bahun. so if they can resolve it means they might just be looking for additional votes from the upper part where is he the only person from lower lofa correct in this election he's the only candidate from lower lofa so where all do of the all other of five, the other candidates come from they come from upper lofa the upper part of the county so you have all of the other Fana. five candidates come from upper lofa correct meaning they're going to fight for the votes there in upper lofa that's exactly what's going to be happening okay and so, so that's what that's what Councilor that's what they, comes they, from lower lofa and he's the only person from lower lofa in these in these elections right yeah that's exactly what it is so he has contested the elections according to you four times who else has contested elections senatorial elections in lofa county who's participating in these elections he has actually contested three times this is three the fourth times. one and what yeah, has been his you know positions whenever he contested he has he have had a very good standing point in most of the elections he's been coming second to the winner okay and, so and that's why which other contestant has also contested in elections in lofa especially senatorial elections so you have honorable Kakba kutimai who contested before but did not succeed um like i said you have one of my Fofana who also contested in uh, the december 2020 election she also participated in that process dr sema was one of those who should have participated in the 2020 election is that but the guy who did not register yes we got reports county? that he all right we got reports that he was in county and did not go at elections commissions to do his registration so as a result so did he, he registered this time uh, I, i'm sure uh, i'm very hopeful that we'll be engaging him either today or tomorrow okay. so that we'll be able to ask him that question so that he don't forget again so all of them are in county currently right that's what we've gathered and you okay elections were declared sorry campaign was declared open yesterday by the national elections commission um what else has the nec done in the county are ballot papers already in county and if you can tell us how many voting precincts do we have in in, in lofa so let me do that like i said per upper and lofa like mm -hmm. i have gathered because you got two like uh, electoral magistrates. Okay. At the upper at the upper end of the county, you have a total of two hundred and thirty three polling places. That's in upper Lofa, and then you have ninety six precincts. Okay. That's for upper Lofa. For lower Lofa, mm. uh, what we have is. Uh, you have 66 precincts and then you have 215 polling places that's do for the lower end do we know exactly how many persons are expected to go to the elections in alofa approximately how many persons will turn out to vote or i expect so to turn out to vote for the records from the national elections commission we have a total of 187,775 registered voters. Okay. It is expected that they would they are the ones who are going to be voting if they should turn out. Interestingly, of that number, we have 96,829 that are females, mm. and then we have 90,000. 946 that wow so the women the females have really registered to vote so they are in really really high gear to participate in these elections why why, why right. is that so 
Well, um, in terms of interested in these elections. So this is this is what we've gathered. Sometimes people think that uh, when elections are over, mm -hmm. uh, it's about mail mail who got the issues. They want to talk about the issues, but there are a lot of things that affect the women. Right, the issue of the health care, the issue of farm to market growth, the issue of agriculture, the women are deeply into those things. And so whatever result that comes from every election has a major role to play on them. And so they, they think it's important that they get into this election and be able to be part of the decision making process. That whatever mm. comes up yeah, that of. is great to hear about the women. So I know they'll be on the lookout for those candidates who are going to provide those things that they really want. What has the National Elections Commission said? I, I heard that, you know, they had a conversation yesterday with uh, candidates. Do they have the ballot papers already in county? Do we have observers already in LOFA? Do we have security? Correct. So they had, in fact, two separate engagements on yesterday. Like you said, one was with representatives of these candidates and political parties. And the intent of that engagement, according to Albert Smith, who's the senior elections magistrate, was to ensure that you don't have two candidates or political parties campaigning, say, in Vonjama on the same day. So to be able to divide the days, they had to go through a lotto process where the papers were marked and you will have to come and select. Whatever date select means it's a date that you're going to launch your campaign, either in Fongerma and you look at the bigger cities. Fongerma City, Kulahu, Fuya, Zozo, Salaji, and Ba. Those are the cities that they were doing yesterday. So if, for instance, you chose a date that is not favorable for you and mm. your colleague chose a date, you have a chance to negotiate. I saw the team from Tanipoli Mugo Saros and the team from Karakwai Kutime, you know, exchanging dates on yesterday because they had chosen dates that were, were not favorable for them. So that process was on yesterday. On the other hand, you had party agents who were also being drilled as it relates to the do's and don'ts during elections, right? If you go there to represent a candidate or political party, what are those things you have to do? What are those things that you're not supposed to do ensuring okay. that the process is peaceful? So they were agreed with all of those ones. This issue, I'm told by the magistrate that deployment is going to start on the 25th uh, because they've already completed the training for those who they've put it to work as election workers. So they will begin the deployment on the 25th of this month okay so what about it, uh, security do we have security in county have the ballot papers arrived in lofi county what did they say about that so all of those materials are already in county according to the magistrate and in terms of security uh, we are expecting our the the deputy police commander was in the section yesterday he made us to understand that there are additional security apparatus who are expected in county to okay. beep up the strength of the guys who are already on ground. So they are also on top of their game, and they are also sooner or later will be deploying those officers at those various areas that should be deployed. But there are going to be additional security apparatus coming to the county to beep up the strength of the guys who are already on the ground. Okay. So, um, um, Everything is set as far as we know now for the Lofa County uh, by elections. And the women, we are told by Tokatanu, have registered even more than uh, the men in the county because they are also concerned about, you know, their uh, health, uh, their farm to market roads. So they will be determining, you know, who becomes uh, senator for Lofa County and those people who are in the race now are also going to be making promises to these women or the people of Lofa County, uh, you know, getting them to know that if you vote for me, I am going to do X, Y, Z. Well, whether they do the X, Y, Z is another thing, but that is what um, politics or politicking is all about. Uh, 
Yega, you um, listen to um, Topatano. Yes, uh, Titi, I think a couple of those issues he spoke about uh, is, is, uh, to, to begin on, on the discussion is to highlight the medium yesterday with the uh, political actors and like he said, uh, during these processes you have the National Elections Commission uh, main focus is to maintain uh, peace in the country and so uh, one of such discussion is the fact that they well, they've been able to bring on board all of those who are actors in the Lopat County uh, election and to just have a commitment that when we are out to campaign, uh, the fact that campaign activities have been opened up uh, in, in Lofat County, they don't want people coming in comfort. You know, uh, the main actors will not be the one coming in confrontation with each other. They will be able to meet and, and find a way out, but they are supporters. So you don't want to have uh, two political uh, institutions or two Canada's uh, supporters coming in conflict with each other. It's going to create some bit of tension in the county. So uh, to, to curb such, the National Elections Commission on yesterday held a couple of discussions with the political actors, uh, the different candidates' representative, Mario Mufofina and, and, and Cyrus, uh, Momo Cyrus, uh, Garakba Kotiman, uh, Sumul Kupi, and, and the list uh, continued, who are qualified now to participate in the uh, senatorial by election. So, yes, the, the focus of the National Elections Commission is to conduct the election, but whilst they are conducting the election, it's also important to ensure that peace is the order of the uh, the order of the day in Lofat County. That's why they've called on the uh, national or the joint security uh, to beef up uh, security operation in Lofat County. And all we can say to uh, the electorates in Lofat County is to just go about a peacefully uh, uh, in terms of uh, the conduct of election. If if you are having your political rally here today. XYZ is having a political rally here today, then we don't want to see ABC uh, come around and, and, and throw in some jabs because uh, when you start to do those things in, in Lofa County, remember we're coming from a very heated conversation. Uh, they had to go to the, uh, na uh, the Supreme Court. Of course, it started from the National Elections Commission, uh, later on landed at the Supreme Court, and then the matter got adjudicated today. Uh, the uh, National Elections Commission is on a, yet another mandate uh, to ensure that they can have uh, a senatorial election or a bar uh, election in, in Lofat County. So it is good to just conscientize all of the parties, all of the actors in Lofat to ensure that uh, what we all are going for is to have the election. But mm. just having an election, we need to observe the peace or maintain the peace of the country. And that's why it is Absolutely. important. Absolutely. The peace is really, really important to be maintained because without peace, you know, we wouldn't have elections. But I think we still have Tano on the line this morning uh, from Lofa County who has been telling us more about the candidates, telling us about what the National Elections Commission is up to in that county and telling us how many voters, um, how many registered voters are going to the polls or expected to go to the polls and what is going to happen in the coming days. We all know that on the 28th, uh, the special by-elections in Lofa County will be held and those people there will have an opportunity. But one thing I wanted to ask Tano this morning before I let you go is, you know, this issue of people who are still, people who are representatives but want to participate in elections, maybe senatorial elections in their county. Is this something that, you know, the county is concerned about? And, 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 and I'll put it squarely with uh, the issue of Myra Mofofana. She is a current lawmaker and running to be uh, a, a, a senator. There, and there is another representative who is running also to be a senator. Are the people in your county concerned about that? And my, my question is about concern in a way that, you know, it takes money out of the pocket of the government. Because if one of them should win elections tomorrow, win these elections that are ongoing in Lofa County or the upcoming elections, there will be another, you know, by-election in the county. Correct. You read about that. And it's, it's a serious concern amongst the people here in county. Uh, that's a serious concern that the people have raised over and over and again. Not just for this time, even gone election, they raised uh, similar 
concern because just as you stated just in case she wins these elections it means you're going to have another by-election uh if if dr Selma wins it means you want to have another by-election in Montserrat and they're considering the economic status there are a lot of people who think that those kinds of funds should be used for other developmental purposes instead of just having repeated bad elections so there, there are a lot of people who think that it's important that if you have a city lawmaker wanting who to, to to contest who have not ended his or her turn that person should resign there are people who call for but that. But if the president resigns, that obviously will mean that we have to have a by-election also. A by-election. Yes. So, so the point so that, is that's a, that's whether they're going to remain in that position and wait until their tenure expires, then they can, you know, go for another seat. But to be in that seat and, you know, contest for another seat, or whether you resign, there will still be by-elections. Do we still have time? Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's one that, that others have raised, right? So it's a mixed view. But just as you said, majority of those who we've heard or we've listened to are the ones actually talking about, like you said, ensuring that that person complete his or her term to which they were elected for vying for another, another position. Okay, so people are concerned about that also, right? All right, correct. Okay. So, Patano, thank you so much for, you know, filling us in with information from uh, Lofa County. Uh, Topatano is our correspondent there in Lofa County. And we at the Liberia Broadcasting System are going to put a spotlight on the Lofa County by-elections. Everything that is happening there, um, ELBC Radio is going to bring that to you live. We have people already in the county uh, stationed to bring you exactly what will unfold in Lofa County and you know usually when elections are held in any of the counties um, provisional results are also you know read and so we're going to have people in the county they're already on their way to Lofa County and whatever happens in Lofa County you can tune into ELBC radio because we're going to bring it live to you as it unfolds there in Lofa County. This is Liberia today. Um, do we have some comments uh, from our Facebook page? Let's acknowledge those people and then we take a break. Yega. Well, I'm still trying to go through and, and it's, it's like uh, I don't know, technology is trying to film me this morning, but, but let me try my best. Uh, there are a couple of uh, comments I've come across this morning and, and so we will try to go and read a couple of those uh, comments right here on our live feed again you can keep uh, sharing the live feed uh, so that others uh, will know exactly what's happening from our end uh, Mohammed uh, Bangura is greeting us uh, Augustine Dua says keep up the good work uh, from Maryland County Harper City he's watching uh, Liberia today uh, we also have uh, not much from my end, but I'm seeing a bit of uh, uh, some 22 comments. I'm trying to actually scroll, but it's like, uh, okay, Elijah Patrick uh, Hruman is following from Lofat County. He says, I'm trying to scroll and, and get more of the comments, but I show later on we'll get uh, those comments coming uh, so that we can read. But again, if you're watching us and uh, we are discussing, you, you can just uh, maybe ask some questions. We're going to read up those questions. Remember later on, the test question is going to be posted. Last week, we had a winner, yes. We had a winner last week. And so we expect that last week, but on Monday, of course, yes. We had a winner. <laughs> and so I think today is Wednesday. There will be another test question coming up later on. And if you attempt that uh, question, you stand a chance to walk away with a bag of rice. And like Titi will regularly say, uh, well, you don't want to play with like the rainy walking season. business. Rainy, rainy season. season. You, always, you should always have walking in the home because when there is no walking, you know when it rain like that, you can't even get outside. But if you have the rice and you just need some oil and pepper, you can just send somebody on the room and get small pepper and oil. Warm in, you know, one cup, no crop of wheat. Today, we will also have in studio some of the contestants of the um, Miss Liberia. Liberia Beauty Pageant. And you never can tell 
four of them will be here this morning with us. They might come from your county. And I'm told that in July, it's going to be kicking dust. Which county, um, which contestant, which queen from which county, uh, you know, it's going to be Miss Liberia to represent our country out of this country. Well, I hope my queen wins. I don't know about you. You don't even know my queen, but you know, I hope my queen will be uh, in. Did you're from, uh, from, and, and from, 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 I'm uh, from so many counties. Yeah, from so distant like <laughs> Yeah, so. Uh, to a certain extent, you have your attachment with uh, Grand Crew. Uh, you, to you another link, extent with uh, yeah, Sino, you know. To another <laughs> extent with Montserratu County. And uh, to another so. extent with Grand Bassa. Uh, uh, okay. Mm. Uh, no comment. Uh, no anyway, way. he's from Bassa, so he wants me to have an attachment with Bassa. I don't know. Maybe to an extent with Bong, with Nimba. I'm not even sure. Um, my Gibi, I'm not even sure. But anyway, um, they will be here. We will be talking to them also. Let's take a break and be right back. This is Liberia Today. Stay with us, please. It's my greatest sin But what can I say When all I do is fall for you Boy, my heart can take it no more This my mind can hear me no more Oh, oh, oh yeah Cause I'm drunk on your potion Can't feel my lips burning Losing composure Can't feel my face drowning it's so irrational, ready to risk it all. If I can have you, nobody can. Tell me how, how can I get my mind of you? How can I take my hands of you? How can I get my eyes of you, baby? Welcome to the health tips part of the segment on this show. Uh, as you know, today is Universal Yoga Day, and we are talking about the benefits of yoga. So on this health tips segment, I will be giving you few benefits of yoga and 
It is very much important because if you earlier listened, we said that it helps you with your mind, body, soul, and spirit. So who doesn't want to be conscious about their surrounding, their mind, their inner self? Definitely, it's got to be me. So here are some benefits of yoga. Here are some importance of yoga. Here are some of the things that you need to know uh, so that you don't, you don't feel like someone is just doing some karate pose. <laughs> but we're doing yoga that is very much beneficial to you as a person. So yoga helps improve and strengthen your balance and flexibility. To be able to balance correctly, yoga helps with that aspect. Who doesn't want to be flexible? Who, does, who doesn't want to, you know, crack a little bone and then, you know, feel comfortable in themselves? Definitely it's going to be me. I want to be comfortable. I want to feel flexible. So if you want to feel flexible in yourself, do yoga. It's going to help you with the, your level of flexibility in your body. And yoga also, I mean, let, let me give you... Um, a little example of a yoga right if i fall down don't laugh <laughs> so doing this three posts this is one example of yoga just concentrate forget about all of your problems at that particular moment if you do this three posts it helps you concentrate especially when you're not looking at anything As a matter of fact close your eyes so you can help you know visit your inner self Yoga is very much important. The fact that you're doing that three post and closing your eyes, meditating on how you can better yourself as an individual. It is very much important consider if you, considering if you look at it from that perspective. But here is also another benefit of yoga. Yoga actually benefits your heart health. Who doesn't want to be healthy from the heart? Definitely is going to be me again. I, I, I guess you too wants to be healthy from your heart. And also, yoga helps relax you. It helps you sleep better. And sleep is very much important. No matter how strong you are, you need to sleep. So if you're able to sleep correctly, peacefully, it's going to help you. This is why yoga helps contribute uh, to your sleeping aspect yoga also can mean more energy and brightens your mood if you notice that you're doing your yoga especially for the sit down where you you close your legs together point out your hands connect with your inner self it brightens up your mood you know it helps you connect with your inner spirit so doing that pose it brightens up your day who doesn't want to have a bright day definitely me and, I, and I'm very much sure that you too want to have a bright day. Yoga also helps you manage your stress. Sometimes we be so stressed in ourselves that we, we feel like putting it on the next person. <laughs> have you ever encountered a, a, a scenario wherein you were so stressed and you want to transfer your stress on the next person? Yeah, it be like that sometimes. So if you're in that position, try doing yourself a yoga. It's going to help you in that aspect as well. And also yoga connects you with support of the community. Yoga helps you in that aspect as well. So if you want to connect yourself with your surrounding and every other thing, yoga helps you think well. It helps you contribute as a human being to the society. So it's very much important. Here is another benefit of yoga. Yoga promotes better self-care. Self-care. Be aware of yourself, uh, your surrounding, your, your body, your, your health. So if yoga contributes to you having a better health and you being self-aware about your body, you definitely want to do uh, a yoga, of course. And uh, that's all we have to tell you about the benefits of yoga. But TT, what? <laughs> I see you doing a tree post already. You must have liked that. Is that it? That is exactly it. Well, you want to connect <laughs> your hand. Definitely. My hand. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
So today is all about yoga and uh, it's about being healthy as um, we've been told by the prof herself. At, um, let me read out some of your comments before we take the sports. We are very conscious minded about you who are following us on our social media page. Today is Universal Yoga Day. And uh, this one is coming from Cedric F. Lamy, who says, Good morning. Good morning, Cedric. Thanks for watching this morning, Morris. D and Nimini. Uh, good morning to my good people of Liberia. A uh, very good morning to you also. Samuel Flomo Jonian. Good morning, senior brother Terry Urukwe Yega. Long time. Oh, um, <laughs> Honorable George Watkins Jonian says, Good morning, folks. Uh, Emmanuel T. Lord Jonian says, Good morning to all the peace loving citizens of Liberia. Good morning to you also, Solomon T. Davis. Good morning, LNTV Davis. Good morning. Hope you're doing great. Good morning from uh, Canada. Uh, Susu Sophia uh, is writing. Daniel Ziowe says, Good morning, guys. I'm um, watching you from uh, Phoenix. Arizona, USA. Keep up the wonderful work, guys. Uh, thanks for watching, uh, Daniel. Kamara S. Osumana says, Good morning from Sierra Leone. Good morning, buddy. Well, okay. Uh, good morning, uh, LNTV. I'm watching live from the Twin City of Ghana, Sokondi, Takra Day. And this person is Emmanuel Menya. Emmanuel, good morning. Uh, James T. Murray says, uh, good morning. Keep up the good work. Good morning, James. Uh, good morning, Ellen TV. Following up from uh, Stockholm, Sweden. It's good to hear, uh, to have you watch us from Sweden. Charles P. King. Uh, James S. Barning is watching. He says, good morning. I am in, I'm listening from Grand Cape Mount County. King Joe, New Liberty. Good morning, Ellen TV, Liberia. I'm watching from Lagos, Nigeria. It's good to have you from Lagos. Kai Yensa, all the way there from Lagos. Ibrahim Political, Modric Setu. He says, I'm watching you live from the most talked about Bekube Avenue in Doe community. Ah, who be this one? I'm Mohammed Bangura. Hi, baby. Now, who is the baby this morning? Ah, now, Constance, okay. Mohammed Bangura says, good morning. Okay, this one says, Augustine Dwe, keep up the good work from Maryland County, Harper City. Uh, it's good to hear from you there from Harper, Elijah, uh, Patrick Koroma. He says, I'm following from Lofa. Anthony St. Jr., watching you live from my comfort zone in Fishtown, uh, Fishtown City, River G county and um do won do wo augustine momokoli good morning i'm watching live from kolba city kola home good morning to all of you there in lofa county and you know what vote right it's all about lofa lofa is going to be on the spotlight but we're going to hear from rukwe yega who has every development from the world of sports good morning yega Good morning again, Titi. The choice the people in Lofa County will make will determine whether they go forward or backward in terms of uh, representation at the Senate. That's why it is important that you go to an election that is free, fair, and transparent, and keeping at the back of your heads uh, the maintenance of peace in Liberia. A very good morning again. Thanks for joining us. Welcome to the World of Sports on. Liberia today on LNTV, of course, a 31-man uh, delegation from the Liberia Football Association, uh, men's honor 17, left uh, the Rabas International Airport of San Monrovia uh, for Vienna, Austria on the 21st of June, where the delegation is headed by the uh, vice president of the LFA, that's the first vice president of the LFA, uh, Sekul Conan and uh, other executive members are also a part of that delegation. Of course, the Honor 17 team is well in attendance. 
Uh, we expect to have uh, the Onan 17 team uh, go against Austria win on the uh, uh, on an 18, that's at 7 p.m. on the 23rd, uh, and then they will also be taking on uh, Red Bull Salzburg uh, on the 3rd. Uh, that's at 3 o'clock on the 24th of this month. They are expected to play roughly four different games as part of our preparation for the July's West African Football Union. That's uh, White Full Zone A. Men's Honor 17 Nations Cup qualifiers. That's going to take place in Cape Verde. All we can say, the best of luck for the Honor 17 team. You know, we had the international friendly here at the ATS, and they were quite impressive thanks to the Honor 17 team. Uh, the last game they played against Morocco, the Honor 17 team uh, defeated Morocco two goals here at the ATS, and they had a wonderful, wonderful performance in that match. Of course, if you want to have a preview of that match, you can just log on to LNTV. We have a set piece for you to keep watching the Under-17 team, a team that is highly, highly progressing uh, for Liberia. Now, initially this morning, we told you that there's ongoing installation of a new school board at the uh, ATS that the Antonio Tottenham Studion uh, in, in Central Monrovia is gradually, gradually taking shape. And the school board follows the installation of uh, floor lights for night. Uh, that's night games by a team of electrical engineers headed by South Africa's Philip Mans. And the lights were turned on by the Liberian Football Association President Mustafa Raji on the 10th of March. Today also is the birthday of uh, uh, the president of the Liberia uh, Football Association, Mr. Ru uh, Mustafa Raji. All the best as you celebrate. But the construction of the uh, squall ball, including the, its cost is, is more than U.S. 300000 That's good. And so if you're going at the ATS then, uh, to watch a game, you're going to have a new, new squall ball at the facility that's why you're seeing on the screen now let's move over to the uh, uh the western world where lukaku the man who has been uh, doing the the jersey for chelsea is expected to have a return to inter milan you know he came from inter milan for chelsea but this time there's a cross deal uh, that's going to ensure that uh, lukaku will go back at inter milan but that deal is somewhere around eight million and so he's going to be uh, Chelsea has agreed a loan of eight million uh, for Lukaku to reunite with uh, his uh, former club. But it's coming at a point that the 29-year-old hired a lawyer, especially to force the transfer, and will take a paid cut to ensure his return to San Sario. Well, it's going to be a buy news for the Chelsea fans. But he's on loan. He's going back to uh, Inter Milan uh, on loan, and there's possibility that. Uh, Chelsea could go out for him once more uh, based on his performance. But again, all the best as uh, he's, uh, you know, kind of caught in or rejoining his teammates uh, into Milan. Arsenal, you know, Arsenal, <laughs> that's a team that uh, one will say when you are uh, an Arsenal fan, maybe you you might be like a uh, joiter. But of course, <laughs> we don't see much uh, uh, fans of Arsenal who are very uh, huge in Bali size or fight. You know, they always that kind of slim. But I don't know whether it's because Arsenal isn't winning Champions League. But again, good for Arsenal this season. They are just in the transfer market, and so they've pinned down a deal with uh, uh, FC Porto to have their midfielder uh, Fabio Varian. Uh, it has been confirmed, uh, 30 million signing for Arsenal. That's good news for Arsenal. They are trying to uh, revamp. They are trying to overhaul the team uh, for the, <laughs> the Premiership. For the 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 biggest the biggest event in world football, that's uh, the Champions League, and so whatever is, is going to be the decision of Arsenal is just to go uh, to the market and ensure that they can have more signings, uh, competent signings that will help the team. Also, you know the issue of transfer is ongoing, so yes. All of the clubs are very busy in the market, the transfer market. They are negotiating deals. What are some of those deals are falling by the wayside? Uh, we'll talk more of, uh, of that. But again, Monaco have agreed 
a deal um, of 18 million to have uh, uh, Takumi Minamino from Liverpool. And so that striker is going to uh, join Monaco. What is it for Liverpool? You know, they've signed already. They got a prolific uh, striker. So, uh, yes, once you don't have a playing time, you don't have uh, space on the team, you have to look for a new home. That's why it is happening to this uh, uh, player of our Liverpool, so he's going to part way with uh, them for Monaco. Now, finally, uh, Sadio Mining, Sadio Mining, the African player, the man who has been in in in, in uh, the middle of Senegal team to ensure that uh, the Ivy Terriers against uh, their opponents in in Africa. You know, they had this clash with uh, Mohamed Salah of Egypt, but against Saleh. It was a Sadio Mane taking the day uh, for his country. But interestingly, he's now going to be a player of Liverpool in, in the coming hours because Sadio Mane has arrived in Bayern Munich. For what? He's going to undergo his medical later. And the cost of a transfer for Sadio Mane is just around 41 million. And so as of next season, we see Sadio Mane in the German Bundesliga that in the premiership for Liverpool. That's it for the world of sports on Liberia today on LN TV. We'll go back to Constance. This time, she's going to tell us what took place uh, across the world on this day. And so it's been uh, considered as uh, today in history. So let's rejoin Constance for today in history on Liberia today. Keep watching. Thank you so much to Yega for taking us through the world of sports and you heard him write all of what you need to know about what's trending in the world of sports. But welcome to the history part of the show where you get to know all of what happened uh, in the world of history. Well, actually in 1934, this guy named John Dellinger, who uh, he was named as the first public enemy. Whoa. Imagine being named as the first public enemy of a country. Who wants to be an enemy of a country? Well, John Dellinger, whose full name is actually John Herbert Dellinger, was born on this day, June 22nd, uh, in, in 1903. But he actually died in, in uh, July 22nd, in 1934. This guy is actually from Chicago, Illinois, and he is an American criminal who was perhaps the most famous bank robber in U.S. history known for the series of robbers, and he escaped in June 1933. So this guy being named as the public enemy. Whoa. Nobody wants to, name, nobody wants to be named as such. But... Is it actually what happened? And also in, in 1939, Queen Elizabeth, now, then she was the princess, she met with her lover for the very first time. She met with her husband, her future husband, who is Philip, actually Prince Philip of Greece. And these two, at that time, Queen Elizabeth was a princess. These two uh, met for the very first time and it was it was a very it, it is a very nice thing that people are able to you know be in that position love is a beautiful thing i always say this and love will always win no matter what so and also in 1941 something horrible happened the operation of the barbar that's the barbarosa actually um, let me tell you what the operation of the Barbarossa actually is. The operation of the Barbarossa was the invasion of the Soviet Union by Nazi Germany and most of the assets that are actually allies starting on the 22nd of June 1941 that actually led to the World War II. And this, these people, as you see on our screen there, uh, the war actually happened. And Nazi Germany and its ally invaded the Soviet Union during the World War II. Looking at that, I'll always say this, a war is not a good thing. And it, was, it would never be a good thing, especially comparing it to the current war in Ukraine and Russia. 
it will never be a good thing. So we pray that whenever these things come around, it be people pull hot to it. Because imagine going through such a trauma, kids, a lot of people. Also in 1962, uh, here is what happened. In 1962, the French Boeing 707 actually crashed in Godolu. Godolu is actually a French overseas region and is an island group in the Southern Caribbean Sea, resembling a butterfly. It's, two, it's actually the two largest islands are separated by the Slavy River. And this incident actually happened and it led to over 113 people being killed. Also in 1990, remember the last time we told you about the apartheid? The apartheid, which means apartness in Afrikaans language, Nelson Mandela spoke actually to, he had actually addressed the nation, United Nations Special Committee against the apartheid. And remember, like I said, the apartheid, which is which in the African language means apartness, was a system of legislation that actually upheld a segregationist policies against non-white citizens of South Africa. After the National Party gained power in South Africa in 1948, it was all white government immediately began enforcing existing policy of racial segregation. Nobody wants to be segregated from another person. It is a bad thing and we will always be against it. Thanks to Nelson Mandela for actually speaking up on such a thing. But also in 2009, a terrible thing happened. In 2009, the Metro subway train collided in Washington, D.C. and it killed over by, and it actually killed over by nine people and leaving 80, over 80 people being injured. Nobody wants to be involved in an accident. So those people that actually lost their life, may their souls continue, continue to rest in perfect peace. But as it actually again in 2012, two Baghdad market bombing killed 14 people and actually injured 106 people. Wow. Well, bombing, these things, these terrorist acts uh, uh, are very bad and we will always be against such a thing. But those that lost their lives, may their soul continue to actually rest in perfect peace. Something happened in 2018. This comedian, who is John Oliver, is blocked, was blocked in, uh, on the Chinese social media for actually, why did he do such a thing? He was blocked on the social media for uh, actually talking to the leader, who is Xi Jinping. Um, I mean, these Chinese people are very strict-minded people. So if you want to talk things, things about then you have to be very much observant but this guy was actually blocked from all of china and social media so literally all of what he was talking not going across china and it did and su jinping did what he had to do so that's it for the well two more things that we need to tell you that actually happened in 2018 as well president donald trump spokesperson who is sarah sender was asked to leave the red hand um, that's the Red Hen restaurant. Why? So this lady, and this lady was told to actually leave a restaurant only because she's a supporter of Trump. Could that be? Her support of Trump policies, ignite, that's the igniting debates. So the fact that she supported <laughs> Trump, uh, she was pulled out of a restaurant. And Trump came back to say that it was a terrible thing. In fact, he t actually told the lady who owned the restaurant that the, it was a terrible thing and they didn't have to do such a thing. But also in 2019, an attempted coup actually failed in Ethiopia. Uh, four officials were actually killed, including the army and chief staff of the general. You know, in 2019 in Amhara region, coup d'etat was actually attempted and it was attempted it was a attempted coup d'etat against the Amara region government on the 22nd 
of June in 2019, during which the functions of the Amara Region Peace and Security Bureau uh, was actually assassinated and the Amara Region President that Abashud Makanan, a bodyguard sent in with a nationalist faction actually assassinated. It, it is a terrible thing, but again, we pray that all of these things don't happen. And we pray for all, all we pray for is for the better. But that's it for the world of history. And we actually have, not forget, it's yoga day. And I remember I told you that you need to do your extra thing. You need to connect yourself with your mind, body, soul, and spirit, and all of those extra things. But we've told you all of what you need to know that's trending in the world of history. But stay with us. Don't even forget, this is Ellen TV, and here we tell you more about your day-to-day life, day-to-day activity, day-to-day of everything that's actually occurring. But let's transition to... That's actually, it's hilarious. <laughs> it's hilarious. Let's actually transition to TT, who is going to tell us uh, what's up, what's going on. What is hilarious? <laughs> the yogurt? Thank you. The fact that you almost fell. <laughs> <laughs> really? Is she serious? Did I almost fall? I don't think so. I am even a little bit fake more than something in um, yoga, but it is what it is. Don't mind her, she got a big mouth. So um, this is Liberia today. We told you we'll speak with uh, some of the queens. Uh, who are these queens we have in studio? Um, you know, Miss Liberia pageant. Uh, they had a kickoff and um, some wonderful ladies made it to uh, this segment of the program and so they're in the competition and one wonderful beautiful outstanding queen from a county in Liberia is going to emerge Miss Liberia and represent Liberia outside the country we have two of them with us um, this morning in studio and I'm going to go straight to them wonderful ladies good morning how are you good morning, good morning. how are you I'm good, thank you. Great, <laughs> thanks for coming. Thank, thank you. Too. So, which county uh, do you represent? Good morning, everyone. My name is Joyce Jatu for the Miss Green Cape Mount County 2022. Okay, welcome, Miss Green Cape Mount. Thank you. And who are you, Miss Who? Greetings, Liberia. I am Linda Estu, representing Bonnie County in this year, Miss Liberia. Okay, so we've got two ladies from Western Liberia, right? Yes. Grand Kip Mount and Bonnie. So I'm going to refer to you as Miss Bomi, Miss Grand Kip Mount, yes. instead of calling <laughs> your names, because with that, people will kind of, you know, sure. uh, gravitate to you. So I'm going to start with you, Miss Bomi. Where did the inspiration come from to really want to venture in such a competition? <laughs> well, this is not my first competition. Okay. Here. Yeah. I started back 2010 when I won my high school pageant and later eventually in the university pageant with um, Ms. Stella Maris. Okay. But I didn't take place. What do you mean when you say you didn't take place? Yes, I participated in the show. I didn't take place, but that didn't stop me from pursuing my dream of becoming a supermodel or a beauty queen. Okay, you mean you so, didn't win any yes. uh, uh, title when you participated in Miss Telamari? Sure. Okay. In uh, 2019, I participated in Miss Tourism Liberia. Miss Tourism? Yes. Okay. Which I won. Oh, congratulations, yeah. Miss <laughs> Tourism. <laughs> oh, thank you. That's so good. I feel like it's about time I take Bombing County to a higher stage, which is Miss Liberia. That's why I'm here. You go, girl. Thank you. It's about time you take Liberia to a higher <laughs> level when you shut up Warner. Okay, that's great. So you've been in this for a long time, since 2010. Mm -hmm. It's more than 10 years now, and you can't wait to grab that Miss Liberia title, right? Sure. Do you think Bombing can really, really grab the title?
title. They got all the counties. So, well, you know, Omi, Omi is definitely going to make history this year. Really? Yeah, I want you to mark that. <laughs> it's already marked. Trust me. Okay. So, uh, being a beauty queen, what does it come with? Well, being a beauty queen comes with confidence or winning spirit. You should have charisma. Like, your self-esteem should be very high because um, in our generation today, people feel like once you're a beauty queen, you're going to transition into prostitution. So, you setting the bias high with your self-esteem, knowing that this is what I want to do. I'm not going to let any word like negative come and bring me down. I like so, that. Yes. I like that. You go, girl. So, you know, like setting the bar very high, having a very high self-esteem, and making sure that nobody ain't bringing mm -hmm. you down mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. any reason. Okay, so Ms. Grand Kip Mount, um, the question goes to you. Have you been in this for a long time? Is this your first time? This is actually my third time. Okay. Um, I participated in Miss Face of Pinsfield back then, but uh, the pageant didn't push through, so... The pageant I, didn't push through, what yeah. do you mean? <laughs> it didn't... It never Materialized. happened. Materialized? No. Okay, so yeah. you opted to represent your community yes, or what? Yes, Lover Street. Oh, yes. really? <laughs> <laughs> what, do, what does that mean? Do they have all lovers on that street? Lover Street is actually uh, the same place as uh, Liberia Broadcasting. Yeah, station. I know LBS yes. is on Lover Street, so <laughs> yeah. they're all lovers on this street, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, but the pageant didn't materialize. No, okay, no. so it was never held. No. Okay. So. And then later, I I won Miss Earth Liberia 2018. Oh, congratulations! Thank you, thank you. Okay. <laughs> But the thing is, I actually grew up watching beauty pageants. I grew up watching Miss World, Miss Universe. Okay. And then, because of my heart, many people who um, oh, encouraged no, me can't, to... I can't, because of a height, she was encouraged. <laughs> many people who encouraged me to, you know, get into basketball or, okay. you know, do pageantry. Or do more. The more yeah, the mm. more I watched... Um, those beauty pageants, I realized that it's, it's actually an incredible platform. It's actually an incredible, it's not just about um, beauty, it's not just about glamour, but there's more to it. What so is more to it you, than you have, glamour and you, beauty? <laughs> <laughs> you have this, uh, this space, this platform to, you know, let people know that you are more than just a beautiful face. Okay. You are smart, you are brilliant, and that your voice matters, and you have so much, so much more to bring to the table. Great. So what do you do for a living? <laughs> I'm actually an entrepreneur. I'm a businesswoman. I Good. am a fashion designer and a makeup Ooh. artist. Makeup artist. Yes. Fashion designer. Yes. Ooh. <laughs> Miss Bomi? What do you do for a living? <laughs> well, actually, I'm a student or graduating senior son to be. Okay. I'll be graduating with my Bachelor of Science degree in General Agriculture from Stella Maris Polytechnic University. Great. Yes. So, at your but leisure um, time, what do you do? <laughs> yeah, so, actually, it's not what I do for a living, but it's my passion, though. So, um... My platform focuses on adolescence education. So it's like every last Saturday in the month, I organize a peer educator workshop for adolescents okay. here to teach them the way about life. Because looking at our society now, if you go on the street, you see many teen prostitutes, boys taking in jobs, we call them sogos, mm. teenage pregnancy, a lot peer pressure. Children are driving from friends, influence, going the negative side. So, organizing that workshop helped them a lot because um, nowadays you see youth prefer confiding their friends than older people. So, part of that workshop, we also 
served as Goodwill Ambassador for the Destiny Recovery Program at NISO. It's like a mini Destiny rehab recovery program. Yes. What is that? It's like a mini rehabilitation center where we take sogos prostitutes on the street, carry them there, try to like wash out the drugs for in them, okay. teach them the right way about life, enroll them into vocational training, and different <laughs> yes. Okay. So that's more like my passion. It's not more like. I'm getting something for, or like I'm doing something for a living. Okay. But I believe that me helping them or they seeing someone like me, because like um, I'm not working, but at least I'm making my responsibility like every month, I'm responsible to carry the essential needs. Where do you them. get that from? <laughs> well, um, do you have sponsors? I believe in this saying that says, Success is not about how much money you make, but the difference you make in people's life. Okay. Yes. But you must have and money to make difference in people's life, though. Well, it's not about how much money. Okay. So the yes, little that the you little can that you have, give, yes. uh, you believe it will mm -hmm. help to make that person the better, you and give, then you will the you get. Oh, okay. <laughs> so it's more blessed to give than, than to receive. receive. <laughs> okay. So whatever little you have and you give yes. out, you believe that you're making an impact. Sure. Okay, so let's go to the pageant. How did you um, get to this stage and what are your plans for, you know, the next level? We had the kickoff and there were two contestants. Mostly, like, for some of the counties, there were two contestants. And then uh, some of us made it through as the official representative of our, of our counties. And it was actually an incredible, incredible experience. But um, I wish that, and I hope that we have a successful um, even this coming July, July 23rd. Hopefully, uh, we will do our very best. To How represent. did you extend to uh, this, the, to this level where you find yourself now? You had two persons uh, contesting. Um, that position for yes, uh, counties, Grand Cape Mount County. Counties, Your yeah. county had yeah, two, right? Two. You guys were two. What did you do extra uh, that, you know, <laughs> landed you where you are today? I didn't think that I, I did anything extra. I think it was just uh, God, God's grace because before that day, I prayed and I worked very hard on my talent and what talent did you exhibit? <laughs> because now if you're telling me about God's grace, I know God's <laughs> grace will be with a lot of people in a prayer. And uh, now your colleagues are hearing that you were praying, so they will be praying also. So what talent did you exhibit? That That's day? not actually a talent, mm -hmm. but you just said traditional performance. Okay. Traditional performance. You performed so better than your colleague, right? <laughs> That's the judge's school, so. Okay. <laughs> So we had to do a traditional performance okay. and and then I went home and I thought about something that would be more impactful. I actually wanted to do something that actually happened in Green Cape Mount. What was that? I did a research and I wanted to portray an actual story, something that happened in Cape Mount and then I did a research. There was this story of a lady named Bindu. She was a strong woman. She was able to fight to defend her county. Okay. Was yeah. she a warrior? Yes, yes. Okay. So what? Did you come out, you know, uh, like a warrior? And that scared the judges. <laughs> and they <laughs> said, whoa, Bindu is <laughs> around. So she has to, Firstly, you know. I had to portray uh, something that actually happened. Like, uh, we fishing. We do fishing in Cape Mount. Okay. So I walked. And then I fish at the little, you know, act of fishing um, on the stage. Mm -hmm. And afterwards, I went backstage and I came, um, there was, you know, the rivalry, uh, they send, they send their men on stage first. They rap from the rivalry town, they send their men on stage and both of them fought. But later on, I came on stage and I fought him and I won. And you won him. Yes. Oh, how would you <laughs> blow the minds of the judges then? <laughs> So you can imagine <laughs> now, Miss Bomi, you guys are all in this for winning. Uh -huh. Benu is still 
and the competition <laughs> from uh, Cape Mount County, that very strong warrior. Um, what did you, how did you extend to this, you know, um, um, uh, this level of the competition and what are plans, you, you know, I know you would say, I, I, I'm not going to, you know, tell the people my strategy here, but um, there are other things you intend to do, you know, to emerge winner. Well, first I will say preparation. You're preparing, right? Oh, yes. Hmm. Like, when I went for the audition in Green Cape Mount County, I was the only contestant from Fleming County. Okay. Yes. So, I see that as an inspiration. And for this pageant, I'm contestant number one. And you know, there's nothing like one. <laughs> so okay, <laughs> tell me about it. What does that mean? There's nothing there's like nothing one. There's nothing like one. Mm -hmm. One is so, always the first, yes. right? I'll be the first to perform on the show. I'll hmm. be the first to be crowned Miss Liberia. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Self-confidence. So, mm -hmm. so I'm preparing really well. And um, to all the Bohemians in and out of Liberia, if you are watching this live, I want you to summon in Tottenham Break on Saturday. We are having a lot of fun, meet and greet. And oh. uh, we have a lot to offer to the Bohemian people, the people of Bohemian County. So I'm urging you guys to so summon at the uh, multi-purpose building in Tottenburg and see what your queen has to offer. Oh, so you're summoning the people to <laughs> Bombing County. Yes. Why you guys are doing this meet and greet? Is that, you know, for a specific reason? No. You know, like, uh, the county has so many towns and villages. Okay. Yes. So since you cannot reach to them all because... We are in a rainy season and the road condition is very bad. Okay. So we send communication out to the town chiefs of the various villages and towns. Okay. Yes. So when the summer has taught me break, they will be the ones to carry the, the good news the back message. to the rural towns. Is there something specific that, you know, your county as a queen that you expect from your county, the county you represent? How does the county support you guys in this, uh, in this competition? <laughs> well, my county is very supportive, especially when it comes to um, the political leaders, traditional leaders, the county authority, like everybody, the collective support got me here today. What kind of support do you guys solicit from county leaders, you know, political leaders, um, their fans, the citizens, what kind of support is that? Well, financial support, mental support, um, their influence. A lot they their have influence? Offer, yeah. Does somebody have to, <laughs> you know, influence the judges or no, what no, kind no, of no, influence no, no, are we no. talking about here? Like, um, hmm. I'm contesting uh, for Miss Library representing Bombing County, mm -hmm. but I may not know everybody. Maybe I might want to reach to this person for support, and I don't know the way how. Okay. Yes. But through the influence of my senator, representative, yes. Okay. So um, um, let me come back to you, Miss um, Cape Grand Cape Mount County. Um, there, she's having a meet and greet. What are you guys up to in Grand Cape Mount? How are you rallying the support of your people? Well, firstly, I uh, um, really want the support of the Cape Mountainians out there. And I want to urge everyone to please vote for me, to kindly vote for me, to text my number, which, my number, which is number six, to 2022. And all I ask for is for your blessing and your guardians as well in order to make this journey successful. So far, I have been promoting my advocacy, which is um, empowering our youth with diverse vocational skills. And this coming Saturday, I will be on a road, a road trip to Cape Mount, and that is um, Lake Piso. Mm. Yeah. On a road trip, <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> You're just going to drive from here to like pizza? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, what's going to be happening on the trip? It's actually a mental health, mental health awareness trip. So we'll okay. be on the bus and having some discussions. 
Okay, so yeah. the discussions will be on the bus. Yeah. Now, I'm concerned about, I hear you say you're number six, and people should text to 2022, right? Yes. Number six, 2022. You're number one. People should te text uh, number to, to number sorry, one, 2022. 2020. What? 2020? 2020. 2020. Yeah. Oh, everyone has a 20-something? You have to text the, the person number number to 2020. And the number you are texting it to is 2020. Oh, okay. Yes. So your number is number one, number and one. it should be text to... Um, 2020. Yes. Okay, everyone is 2020, right? Yes. Uh, 2022. Okay, so mm -hmm. you guys, before I ask you this other question, let me know um, why are they texting uh, to 2020, uh, number one, number five, <laughs> number six, number seven? Why is that? Well, that's the voting process. It constitutes like 40%. 40%. Yeah, for the percent of the uh, accumulated points for the entire pageant. Okay, so if you have more people texting to that, uh, what are, what are we going to text? Just anything? I no. just what? text the person. Like you recharge, mm -hmm. you recharge directly without uh, buying data bonus of TD day free calls. You just recharge in directly and text number one to twenty twenty on your direct message. Okay, so it's like one dollar for four votes. A oh, one dollar for uh, four per foot. Okay, okay. So you guys create an eyewitness also because everybody so likes to kind of put their three day free call <laughs> on the phone. So even so if you if you put three days a uh, free call, that text is not going to go, no, right? No. Okay. So you have to buy the uh, scratch scratch, scratch, scratch can. So you recharge your phone without activating anything mm -hmm. and then you text to your queen's number yes. and that person gets uh, automatic Auto four automatic, votes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So the person who gets more votes, um, is 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 that's forty percent of the judges go of our entire score for that night. Oh. So okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So it's the twenty third of of July, July, July yeah. that you guys are meeting face to face. Yes. What is going to happen that night? <laughs> is it a clash of the titans? Mm -hmm. Ooh. <laughs> It's mm. more of that. <laughs> more of that. Should we say clash of the counties or? <laughs> for that night, we are not at war. We are not at war, actually. Okay. But for that night, uh, we'll be doing um, swimsuit rounds, evening counts, and talent. Okay. Yes. So I understand the part uh, has to do with swimsuit because you have to wear your swimsuit <laughs> and come and dance, and then walk. you have to walk, um, um, walk in front of everybody. Yes. Uh, where is it going to be held? Ministerial complex. Oh, wow. That's a stage. <laughs> okay. So, um, you guys are also going to do talents. What does that mean? Talent has to do with something that you can do, your card, giving talent. Your card, giving talent. So something from within. Yes. Uh-uh. So, so if you can sing, if you, if you can, can dance, dance, if you can dance, you go and, you know, portray that. Uh, okay. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> so, what do you do? <laughs> oh, you don't want to tell all your talent, right? Um, it's, a, it's a surprise. Yeah. How is it a surprise then? Because it's your talent. It's what people know that you do, right? So how is it a surprise? It's how? Me, as for me, I would say like, I'm going to package it, package it well. But um, something people, it's actually something that people actually know about me, know that I can do. Okay. I'm just going to, have a little twist to it as well. Okay, yeah, yeah, so that it comes out really, really good. Yeah. And, you know, it blows the minds of the judges. Yes. And then you can um, yeah. go to the next stage. Yes. The competition is in stages, right? Mm -hmm. Or is it that night that one person is going to be crowned? Yes, that, um, that's that same final, very night. That's the final. Sure. So what, what do people pay? Do people have to pay to go to the ministerial complex to yeah, watch no, that? Tickets no, on sale. Okay. So tickets are already out on sale? Not yet. Mm, not yet. Okay. Yeah, so um, before before the grand final, mm -hmm. like one week to the pageant, mm -hmm. we'll be doing our, our platform presentation. Okay. Yeah, so so what you intend to do sure. if you emerge winner of the competition, right? Sure. Is that yeah. you call that? That is what you call the your your platform. Your platform yes. Um, uh, what is it? Competition platform? <laughs> what? It's actually a project. Project. Yeah. Oh, okay. So it's going to be done at a, a specific place where all of you come together and you have people watching you. 
show. We, we have, have judges, uh, like our professional people in those fields that we will be presenting on. So okay. So, yeah. So I'm asking whether the public is, in, is going to be invited. Well, we don't know yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> You're not sure about that. Yeah. So um, we have the contestants, some of the contestants in the upcoming Miss Liberia Beauty Pageant. One of these wonderful ladies will emerge winner. We have just the queens from Bomi and uh, Grand Cape Mount County. You know, uh, since uh, two or three weeks, we've been talking to the contestants, some of the contestants contestants every uh, Wednesday we have some of them on the show so today we have the Queens of Bomi and uh, Grand Cape Mount County right here they already told you that you know you're going to be voting for them Bomi is number one uh, Grand Cape Mount is number one six yes okay and they say mm -hmm. you can go to three this free call and then you say you're going to you know uh, send a text message to not going to work so put money on the phone and then you vote for your queen. And if you did that, that queen would get four votes automatically. We're taking a short break. When I come back, I'm going to be hearing some va and some, <laughs> what is it, gola, right? Gola. <laughs> Stay with us. We'll be right back. In the wilderness of West Africa's largest remaining rainforests are amazing discoveries. Explore Liberia's breathtaking beaches. Thrilling Green Mountains. Point breaks in impressive ways. Adventure filled rainforests. Discovered an authentic, exotic cultural mix of unparalleled traditions and heritage. Meet the friendliest and most free spirited people. Visit Liberia. Experience our openness, authenticity, and optimism that will keep you longing and. So we roll. This is Liberia today on LN TV. Welcome back. You know, I said to you that when we come back, uh, these wonderful ladies will be speaking their dialects to us. And you know, it's good that I sit where I sit. So I ask all of the questions. Nobody's asking me to speak anything, but I'll be asking people to speak their dialects here this morning on Liberia today. Your queens are here. Hey, yo, who are watching us via our social media? We have Bomi and uh, Green Cape Mount represented in studio. Whatever question you have for um, any of them representing the county you come from, you know, just send a text to our Facebook page. We will ask them that question. But before I come back to them to tell me what they can say, the question I'm gonna ask in 
you know, va and uh, <laughs> if va and uh, what is it? Why are trap now? For me now, what I call that people come from for me. And they put, I, I would, I would, you would tell me whether they put, how they put in talk, but they could not put, they say, could not put me. I will ask you a question about that. So keep preparing yourself. But let me go straight to uh, Constance uh, Joetta Nichi, the professor who's going to bring us, you know, entertainment. And then when, we, when we're when done with that, I come back to the queens. I want them to prepare themselves. Joetta, how are you doing? Well, I do. That that's it. To see a daughter, I But anyway, I, I pray and hope that every one of us in Liberia learns to speak our dialect because it's something that's very much important. That is something that actually distinguishes us from the rest of the people. But welcome to the world of entertainment where you get to know all of what's trending in the world of entertainment. I'm talking about the social part of the show where you get to know who did what and what happened. Well, during the course of the week, Jay Zeno actually posted on his social media page. Remember the last time we told you that he was about to release his his song uh, music video, the song Fall Down Inside, if you know that song that he featured the Ghanaian star medical in. But unfortunately, the music video uh, got stolen from the the producer someone stole it from the producer the person laughed her and then it led him to you know cry he posted a picture crying on a social media it is a terrible thing nobody wants to be frustrated in such a way but sorry to him and i pray and hope that they get that back because it's a lot of work put in there but also um pck and uh skinny ball Ponzo is yet to release the song that they recently made my charger oh wow the talk of the town it's one of the songs that's trending right now i mean you see pck they're doing the karate dance because if you if you actually listen to the lyrics of the song you will uh hear that he said he wants to speak chinese then he said he young i'm not a chinese person so don't even laugh at my chinese speaking but also the big rabbi liberia actually posted uh on their social media page that um they're about to start the, um, if not have already started, they're about to start the Big Rabbit Liberia thing. And we saw that the house is very much beautiful. It is a total design. Who, who doesn't like beautiful things? Of course, everybody likes beautiful things. Who don't like that, that thing? That the whole story. But for our international news, here is what happened. A very, very big fish very very big fish i've never seen such a fish before as you see on our stream that that is a fish i uh, know you two haven't seen such a fish but a very big fish that's actually called a stingray fish was actually caught in Macon river in cambodia now holds the title of the biggest fresh water fish i mean look at that fish just look at that fish and it actually weighed of about 661 pounds Woo wow just take a look at that fish i mean it's a very big fish i must say if i'm in liberia if that fish is in liberia it's a whole pepper soup thing <laughs> it's a whole pepper soup thing in fact it was it's gonna take us um an entire week to eat that fish think about it but yet yeah. and also for the very first time in 241 years uh colombia had a black vice president this woman, uh, this woman for the very first time, like I said, Colombia had a first very, for the very first time, Colombia had the black vice president. And it happened that she was a commoner before, and she was once a housekeeper, an activist, someone who was always pushing for what's right. But looking at the change is a good thing. It is really a good thing that it actually happen but wendy williams who is a tv host there in america is actually putting us she's actually stopping now she's no according to her she's not going to do that television show on her television show the william the wendy williams show no more but she's going to transition into another thing and it happened that 
uh, her 13th season of her series is actually set to begin a new media project, according to Estra. So this woman is no longer going to be doing the William, Wendy Williams show, but according to her, she's going to do another thing. But anyway, it's good to, you know, carry herself all about doing, you know, who who, who wants to stay in one position? Definitely not Joetta Constance. I mean, Constance Joetta, because you'll be in trouble if you say Joetta Constance. So now I'm in trouble. But also... On June 17, Whiskey and uh, that of Chris Brown actually released a song. It is a beautiful song. I mean, you, you said you're talking about Chris Brown, you're talking about a beautiful song. And the song is actually Call Me Every Day. You do want to download that song because the song is indeed, you, you do want to call somebody every day. Call me every day. Chris Brown alongside Whiskey. If you say Whiskey, you, you got to know that it's something that's magical. Africa, as usual, Africa and America is co uh, collaborating. And it's a good thing, like I always say, it's a good thing to see these two uh, collaborating. It, it sparks out the magic, you know, bringing Afrobeats to that of R&B, putting it together. Mm, that's a good one out there. But during the course of the week, in fact, yesterday was the birthday of the Prince William. Remember, we talked about him posting about Father's Day and... Yesterday was his birthday, and David Beckham, who is a football player, former football player, uh, posted on his social media page, actually Instagram, he posted there wishing the royal guy a happy birthday. He told him happy birthday to him, and that's a nice thing to see your, telling your friend a happy birthday and publicly. Indeed, they are true friends. So that's it for the world of entertainment. But don't forget, we're going back to the queens. They need to tell us how they say what they say in their language, even though I don't know how to say my yet. But I hope each and every person learn how to say theirs. But let's see. Titi, what's there? What, what is the queen going to tell us today? I'm excited to know <laughs> what they're going to say. Now you got the queens kind of like, oh my goodness, what are they going to ask us to say here in our dialects? But, um, um, you know, our county and I want you to vote for me. Like, I know how to say vote for me. But we have the question. Do we have the question on the screen so that I see what question? How is the last segment? How or what? What is the last segment on Liberia today called? Not how, please change your how. It should be what is it called? So the last segment on Liberia today, tell us what is that segment called? And then you will walk away with a big bag of rice, you know. I always say, wacky in, go for wacky to finish when you're great. I really season here. We're giving out a bag of rice every time we sit here. So you have a chance to win another bag of rice this day on Liberia today. So let me come back to you, Ms. Bomi and Ms. Um, Grand Cape Mount County. Uh, we give you an opportunity, you know, to tell the people, to say hi to your people in your local vernacular and then tell them that you're representing them. I will understand it. If anybody's not <laughs> saying the right thing, I will know. And again, please text me. If they're not saying the right thing, text me, and I will tell that person that, yo, 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 oh somebody God. says you're not, you're not saying the right thing. So I'm ready. I'm listening. Let's go. Welcome to the Joyce She just said, hello. How are you, um, Jatu for the That's not all of what I said you should say. And trust me, I said, I, I can understand my advice. But it's not hard to speak. <laughs> okay, should we think about the other one? Let's come uh, to you. Miss yeah. mm -hmm. Bomi. My is my Lina is to me. Bomi. She just said the same thing. And Lina, I represent Bomi. Anyway. Okay. <laughs> That is it. They represent Bomi and uh, Grand Cape Mount County. Okay, let's, um, as a queen of your county, is there any pressure on you from, you know, when I say pressure, I mean to win the title? Is there any pressure? I don't think there's actually pressure on me, but I actually want to do good, I want to win. So I think it's from within. 
the fact that I want to win, so I have to be determined and I have to stay strong and be content. Well, it's not more like a pressure, but more like a motivation because I always have my county people telling me, you did it before for me, stories him. You okay. brought proud to us and we know you can do it again. So you just need to like step up a little bit higher. Yes. And uh, right now I serve as a role model to many young girls in Booming County. So I want them to see themselves reflect in me. That's why I'm really, really pushing harder to get the title. Okay. Do, what do you do you guys meet at a certain point in time as you know contestants of the pageant? Is that how it's organized? Every do you time. <laughs> <laughs> we are always together. Yeah. What do you go on camp or something? Or how do you guys meet? And um, what is the interaction like? Like two weeks to the pageant will be going on camp. Yeah. But like we meet that every Tuesday, Thursday, Thursday and Saturday, Saturdays. Saturdays. Oh, you guys rehearse together? Yes. yes. Together. Why is that? Because we have the general routine that we'll be doing on the night of the pageant, yeah. so we have to do it together. And then we meet whenever we are going for interviews, like media rounds. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So uh, two weeks to the pageant, you guys will be on camp. Yes. Uh -huh. And just be real to me. When you guys are on camp, what happens there? Is there <laughs> this, you know, uh, commotion? Um, are other people, you know, kind of intimidating their colleagues? Or what is it? Is it just, you know, let me just stay by myself. Is it almost like, you know, Big Brother Liberia where people are in the house and... You know, I just want to know, know what happens um, when you guys are together. From my experience, I would say um, this is the uh, most united Miss Liberia Bash. Yes, because we learn a lot from each other. We force, we disagree, we agree, but at the end, love is the uh, key point in this pageant, love and unity. Okay. So, so what are you guys fussing about sometimes? <laughs> Like, you know, girls thing now. People are really. <laughs> yeah. Um, Minor <laughs> thing? Yeah, girls thing now. People be like, you have to fold up there too much. Uh -huh. <laughs> but don't tell me, say, I have to fold up him, I have to fold up him, baby. You know, like, stuff like that. The everyday yeah, girl thing. Yeah, okay. sometimes some people will not be in a rightful mood and you try to crack joke with them and you okay. out here. But, um,. Does it get a bit, a little bit tense when you know the day is coming closer, yes. and uh, you know somebody doesn't have uh, what they want, you know, to perform the way they want to perform. Sometimes people, you know, kind of have a drawback or withdraw. Somebody you close to the person, you guys are happy together, but because you're going into a competition, uh, there is that withdrawal. Do you, you do you experience that? Mm, no, because um, even on the night of our kickoff, mm -hmm. we held hands, pray together. Not each not other. You <laughs> no, but um, <laughs> the thing is, uh -huh. the thing is, people are not bringing it like physically to okay. say, you know, okay. I hate it's you like because yes, so no, okay. no, no. Okay. And yeah. so it's something that you really look forward to. You're looking forward to the two weeks before the pageant. It's going to be fun though. It's going to be... Um, so you guys are in one house? <laughs> yes. Okay. So everybody's going to get their roommates. We actually don't have the full details yet. So okay. Hopefully... That's how it's always before. done. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, you guys go there and you're roommates and you choose, do you get to choose the person you want to be with in the room or what? Well, we don't know how it's going to be though. Yeah, okay. But um, what we learn is to support each other. Like she does makeup. So if I want to do my makeup, I'm already new to her hands. Okay. Oh, God, she do my makeup. She will do your makeup for oh, the yeah. pageant? No, no, no. no, no. Okay. Like, uh, we well, support you want to go out, so yes. then you yeah, say, okay. So I don't see it like, maybe because I'm competing against her, she's competing against me, she's going to make my face look a little bit. <laughs> well, you would not even trust her to do your makeup for the pageant. <laughs> no, 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 no. Like, we are all young women. We are we'll looking forward to towards the future, so. though. Because this You're is just a, a competition. Yeah, this is just a competition. You don't know what happens after the competition. Totally agree. Sister. Yeah. Okay. So from my experience, after the passion, what's next? What if you you don't win? So what what's next? 
you there will not be one winner <laughs> oh you guys know that right yes hmm. <laughs> so you already you have you embraced yourself for that so sure. or you say i am going to win even though you guys are many in the competition but there are some people who go with the intention you know to win I don't see any other person. I see myself in this competition. I see myself emerging as the winner, so I'm going to do everything to win. There are other people who go to the competition and say, you know what, there's going to be one winner. If I win, that's fine. Yeah. If I don't win, that's fine. Hmm? Yeah, life is full of uncertainties and uh, surprises, though. Even though you have the uh, mindset of a winner, but you don't know it's a competition, people can turn any time. So... Yeah, Whoever wins the night deserves it because I see. it makes the person put in more work, uh -huh. the person more creative on stage, and the person stood out. So the person deserves it. So you believe what the judges will say, right? Yes. Okay. When you guys are going to these competitions, are you given an opportunity to come with somebody to support you? As in? Hmm? On stage? No, not on stage. In the audience, do you get a special dispensation? Maybe you bring your mom or your dad, oh, or yeah, everybody of is, of you know, compelled to and buy a ticket have your to families go. Families and friends watching you. So they don't oh, watch um, you, but do you have tickets for them? Like um, they we have. For them? Like uh, the Miss Library organization requested for names of our teams that we are working with. Okay. So it's inclusive. Maybe your mom, your pa, your sister, your brother, your manager or so. So they provide ticket for them. At least they gave them that VIP service. Okay. <laughs> That's good. So I will soon let you guys go. Is there anything you want your audience to know um, about you or you want them, you expect from them? Uh, you have an opportunity now to talk to them. Okay. So um, to conclude, Saturday, the 25th of June, I will be in Tottenham Bread. And then after um, publicly declaring my intention to run as Miss Liberia, we'll be headed to Bomi Hospital where we'll be distributing a lot of hospital materials. And then back to my mother's hometown, Dime, where I'm from. We are going to organize our adolescent education workshop where we'll be caring professional healthcare workers to give our family planning, malaria treatment, check blood pressure, distribute food materials, or essential items for, for our daily needs. Okay. So if you are listening to me, it will feel so good to have you in Bombing County to celebrate that with me. And I want to say thank you to everyone out there who has been supporting me. Your support is not going to go to waste because we are going to make history. And I will always say that though. So continue to text number 1 to 2020 Fire Orange or download the eWadi app. Follow the instruction and vote for Bombing County for the win. Thank you. So you got to download an app and then follow yes. and then vote for Bomi. Right. Besides sending a text message, you have to vote for, yeah, for the county. Yeah, through EYD is two ways. Okay. Okay. Mm. Okay, so you will have working on Saturday? <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Food will be surplus. <laughs> okay. You know, that's what we like to hear. When we hear working will be there, then we're Food like, okay, surplus. all roads lead to uh, Bomi County. Let's and hear we'll also have... Um, our traditional masses where we have different different performances from You're joking. oh yeah so, so um if you haven't witnessed that i will ask you to follow me to Bombay county <laughs> to see a live performance from our women masses oh that's great you guys taking this thing to a whole new level right <laughs> that's good Bombay. go okay let's hear from uh, miss kip mount my gratitude to everyone who has been very supportive towards this journey. And I urge everyone of other Cape Mountainians to kindly vote for me. And together, let's promote the empowerment of our youth with diverse vocational skills. Um, before uh, I decided to partake in Miss Labira, I sat down and I thought about a platform that would be more impactful and 
I decided to do um, empowering our youth with skills, diverse vocational skills. And I believe that it's not just about giving out money and material things to you know people out there, but it's about encouraging them to utilize like their car giving talents and skills so that they can be self-reliant and independent in society. So before I leave, I would like to urge everyone to vote for me through the eWally platform. You can download the eWally app and you know cast your vote through that platform or you could um, text my number, which is number six, to 2020. Thank you. Yeah, man, we know it's been a long time since we celebrated this, you know, Miss Liberia <laughs> Beauty Pageant. It's been a very, very long time. And, um, you know, we here at the Liberia Broadcasting System also are hopeful that people will gear up, that we will have, you know, this Miss Liberia Beauty Pageant and people understand that this is something that the country should have every time. Our support to all of you, we know that there will always be just one winner, but you know, the fact that you will avail yourself and say, I want to participate, it means that you have a very high self-esteem to compete with your, you know, fellow compatriots. It's a good thing, and I like the fact that I'm hearing that you guys kind of support one another sisterly. Uh, we have a culture in this country, or we have this thought that people say that women don't support women. I think it's changing. Mm -hmm. It's going to a whole different, a whole nother, a different level. And another thing I observe from um, uh, talking to you, the queens, on this program is that you know your IQ is very high. People think about beauty uh, queens as people who, like you say, are prostitutes. They don't know anything. All the show is their fine faces. But it's totally different now when you guys come out here. Um, you, you guys are outspoken and you have a purpose in life. I, I must commend you for that and all of the other queens who have been on the show. And I think women are taking, you know, yeah, why barriers, the, you know, development, bias. yeah, <laughs> breaking all of the bias. And that is a good thing. I wish you guys all the best. One person is going to win, and I'm sure when that one person wins, that person is going to sit on Liberia today, and we're going <laughs> to celebrate that one queen. But all of you are winners. The fact that you will even, um, you know, get to this stage, you are already a winner. Thank you so much, Miss Bomi and Miss Grand Cape Mount County. Thank all thank the you. best to you guys. Thank you. Let's take a break. We'll be right back. Stay with us, please. Armor for the negative 
so the question is what is the last segment um called on liberia today but um on before we do the review of the papers and let me say to you let me you know kind of apologize because lisa white should have been here for us to talk about the theme of the day unfortunately um she can't be with us uh, this morning but we um just have in studio and we'll be speaking with her for the next 10 to 15 minutes uh the plane just touched down from um uh, Maryland County. So we have the contestant from Maryland County also with us in studio this morning. Uh, she represents that county in the Miss Liberia Beauty pageant. That's the upcoming one on the 22nd of July uh, soon. Morning. How are you? What is your name? Good morning, ma'am. I'm fine. Thank you. Great. My name is Alice Rizal Quay. Say that again. Alice. Miss what? Alice Rizal Quay. Alice Roselle Quay. Oh, yes, okay. Miss Quay. Yeah. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Great. All the way there. Did you come from Maryland to contest in this competition? No, I'm based in right here in Liberia. Okay, Montserrat. Okay, yeah. so who told you that you can be Miss Liberia? <laughs> I told myself because I believe in myself. Great. Sure. Okay, so did you have two persons, you know, bothering for that? seat i mean the maryland county seat or you were the only one who came out as this strong woman and said you know what i'm miss quay and i am going to win i'm going to contest on the ticket of maryland county and become the um, miss liberia actually we had two contestants then okay. we went to so you made it three or you guys were two we were two okay and then uh, we went to maryland for the audition okay after the audition um we're like more than 10 ladies and then uh, two were selected to represent Maryland County for the upcoming Miss Liberia pageant and then we came to Moroville we had a kickoff at the Moroville City Hall okay and I was selected to represent our noble county Maryland okay so you guys went to Maryland for, for the audition? auditioning yeah. process and you guys were almost 10 persons Sure. Um, auditioning to represent Maryland. your county yeah. and two of you emerged winners and then you came to Monrovia and then the finer um, the kick off. Uh, okay the kick off yeah. uh, and then you emerged yeah. winner so you are that lone candidate for, for Maryland, Maryland County sure how did it feel you I know? felt so good actually it was a dream come true you know dream come true yes because we had so many challenges. You hear a lot of people in the corridor saying, oh, that girl that you are competing against, she has connections. And a lot of stuff. Connections? But I did, but I did, but I did what I could. And at the end of the day, I am here today. Uh -uh. So Let's go back a little bit. So you have to have connections before you can emerge winner at you know, a certain point I don't in time? Think so. that, I don't think so. That's why I believed in myself. Okay. And I did what I could. Okay. And today... I was able to be selected to represent our county. So you just thought it was just all scare tactics? Just, yes, it was right. just from the corridor. Okay, great. Yeah. So, mm, what do you do for a living? Well, um, who is Miss Quay? Miss Quay is a graduate okay. of the United Methodist University with a BBA degree in procurement and supply chain management. Okay. And I worked at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. That's where you were currently? Yes, assigned okay. in the Bureau of Procurement. And okay. I'm also a young librarian entrepreneur who is working towards empowering librarian youth through entrepreneurship education as well as employment. And I'm also the founder of the Resource Foundation. And the Resource Foundation is a non-profit organization okay. that focuses on empowering our women and girls through entrepreneurship education. And we are not limited to that. We are also involved into humanitarianism and that of our community initiatives. Great. Sounds sure. wonderful. Have you ever participated in a pageant before? Sure. Okay. And that was 2017 when I won the Miss United Methodist University. Oh, pageant. I see. Sure. So you went to uh, that pageant when you were in university, university. you emerged winner. winner. And so you were like, you know what, even though I'm, you know, working as an entrepreneur, but I can still, still. be that Miss Liberia. Sure. Hmm. 
<laughs> really? Yeah. So uh, you, you, you fear faces? No, I'm not a fear face. You chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Really? Sure. So what gives you that confidence, <laughs> that boldness to kind of, you know, step up and say, you know what, despite all of these phases I'm seeing, you know what, I can still make it. What, where do you get your confidence from? Uh, from what I'm involved into. Okay. I know what I'm capable of doing. So I'm encouraging everyone to come July 23rd to witness what I have to offer. Eh, to I see you to them. witness. <laughs> Hmm? Yeah, my God giving talents. Oh, yeah, really? Sure. Wow. I do it's believe not gonna in be myself. It's going to be easy on uh, the July 23rd. 23rd of July. And I can't, you know, miss that for anything. I have to see what you guys are made of. Okay. Yeah, I really have to see that. And, and you watching us is something that you you should do. <laughs> Come and support your queens from mm -hmm. your counties. Uh, that night, I will not be, you know, a host of any show, but I will be supporting my county. I don't know which one of the counties I will support because I'm from Maryland. No, sorry, I'm not from Maryland. <laughs> I'm from China. I'm from Grand Coup. I'm from Montserrat County. And obviously, all of us are from Montserrat County some way, somehow. As long as you sit here, mm -hmm. you're from Montserrat. But again, you guys are really, really doing well. What is it that, uh, um, what um, is your uh, goal? Okay. What is your goal? For the entire pageant. Mm -hmm. uh, my goal, like I stated earlier on, I own a foundation and my entire platform sentence around my foundation, what I'm engaged into. Okay. So as I speak to you currently, I am hosting a three weeks free cosmetology training for our youth within our society. So and hold it there, three weeks free, free cosmetology. cosmetology. Yeah. So what does that mean? Do you have the young people from a specific uh, um, lo locale or this is from all water for life. now it's from Morovia okay yes so Central where are you Morovia. doing that at my beauty salon where I is your salon? Unisex salon on the 13th street thing called Coleman Avenue okay yeah so so at what time do people gather there to learn um, how to do cosmetology Monday Wednesday and Friday so how is it like? Do you have a lot of young people pouring in sure. because it's free? Sure. I, for now, I have 30 ladies. 30? 30. 30 young ladies okay. for now. And Good. after the training, we're going to certificate them. And then we're also going to provide uh, materials for them to start their little businesses around here. Where do you get the support from? So I you're giving them free training sure. and then you're going to provide materials. Sure. So these are things that we've been engaged into okay. through the means of my organization. So... Actually, uh, from what we generate from mm. the sales, and okay. then we've also been uh, talking to few partners, and we're able to generate a little funding in order to promote this initiative. Great. Sure. So um, you get funding from your partners, and then do these girls, what do they learn specifically in uh, cosmetology? Um, what exactly do you, or specifically do you train them into? Uh, we train them in doing nails. Okay. As for me, um, I'm one of Liberia's best nails technician. How come I'm you haven't done my nails? Ah, that's, I'm encouraging you one of these days to make a step. You are or one you of Liberia's best? Yes. yes. Oh, wow. One of Who Liberia's so? best. One of Liberia's best One of Liberia's technician. best. Who yes. says so? Said by Alice Rizal <laughs> And those Alice who believe in me. <laughs> okay. I've been, I've been getting a lot of people coming there to do their nails. Okay. And we are training them how to do nails, pedicure, medicure, braiding of hair, and that of makeup as well. How does, how does a person form a part of this free uh, training? We have, for now, the batch that we have, mm -hmm. they form. We've already closed for the, for the first How do they persons. get to know about it? And when they come, what is it that they have to do to be a part of it? Uh, uh, we posted on our page, okay. the Results Foundation, and also my business page, Results Beauty Empire. We posted a flyer inviting everyone to come at the beauty salon and pick up a form okay. where you can fill in the form and then return the form. And then we told them a specific time that we'll be conducting the training. And that was since two weeks ago. To our uh, next week will be the last week, oh. and they will be bringing this time around. They won't be especially for those who've been using the dummy hands and the dummy heads to do their practicals. This time around, the last week before graduation, they will be bringing people to do their final test 
on their hands. Okay, to qualify yes, them. To qualify uh, them to get a certificate. Know, the certificate. So what yes. the people who are going to come to are going to do, they, they're going to be having free medicure and pedicure? Free medicure and pedicure. Oh, okay, that's sure. great. I must commend you for that. That Thank is you. so good. Thank you. You guys are really, 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 really making me proud that you guys are, you know, involved in uh, with a lot of things um, despite vying for this um, queenship. Yeah. Uh, you still have other things that you do to impact uh, the society. That is really, really good. So what is your number? My voting number? Yeah. Um, my voting number is number 15. Number 15? How yeah. many are you in this whole competition? You guys we are? We are 15. Oh, so you are the last. No, no, no. It's not based <laughs> on the counties. Oh. They just gave the number randomly. Oh, okay. So sure. are you in the... Maybe because Maryland is all the way there, so they <laughs> gave you number 15. Um, but... How is this? Do you get support from the people of Maryland County? How is your support base? Are you proud of the support you get from your people, or is there a need for more support? I think there is a need for more support okay. because I've tried reaching out to a few people that I think I can um, get in contact with, but to be honest, it's very difficult. Why is it difficult? Especially when you get to their offices, you don't really meet them in person. Some of them that we wrote, we're unable to meet them in person. Okay. Yes, so I think I really need more support. So to all my Marylanders out there, I'm encouraging you all to support me as I vouch for this prestigious position. You promise then are you going to win with or without that support? Sure. Okay. So you have a lot of, you know, big people coming from your county. Also, the Speaker of the House of Representatives is from your county. Have you tried to engage him? I met with the Speaker, and the Speaker promised me that he would get back to me. Okay. So uh, what about the Legislative Caucus? I, I spoke with a few of them, and some of them I never had the opportunity to meet them in person. What about the County Authority? Uh, the county authority, I want to say a very big thank you to my superintendent, okay. Superintendent George Park. He, he and his team in Maryland, they are trying to host a palm butter festival for me. Oh, sure. What so does I will that be flying. <laughs> <laughs> I will be flying to Maryland That's the nice. first week of next month. Oh, yes. Palm butter festival. So everybody's going to be cooking palm butter <laughs> or what? You're going to cook a lot of palm butter and, and then you have we'll people have them on sale. So is it going to be on sale? Yeah. Okay. So we'll have them on sale. <laughs> explain it a little bit. But I'll to be honest, uh, that's what I was told. Okay. So when I get there, I will have the full details of how the entire program will be. It sounds nice though. Mm -hmm. Palm butter festival, festival. Where people are going to eat palm butter. <laughs> the delicacy of Maryland County. Sure. Okay, so do you speak your dialect? Because you're going to speak it before I let you go right All now. All right. Mm -hmm. So you're going to tell your people, speak to your people in um, Gribble, right? Which okay. one is Gribble? That Caesar Gribble or that <laughs> Barable or Cisar what? Gribble. Caesar Gribble. How come I just got it like that? Caesar <laughs> Gribble. So I can understand a little bit of Gribble because I'm from the quad speaking group, though. Oh, okay. So don't even try me like uh, Miss Omi <laughs> and uh, Miss Kitmount did to me. So you're going to oh. tell these people, speak to them, and tell them that you represent their county okay. and your number is 15 and they should vote for you. I'm listening. Ferio Nayana Motade Neko de Kowar. Greetings, everyone. I'm Alice Rizal Kwe, representing the land of sunshine, Maryland County. Today, I'm encouraging all Marylanders in and out of Liberia to kindly support me by texting my code to 15. Number 15 is my code. Kindly text 15 to 2020 using orange SMS. For those out of Liberia, you can also vote by downloading an app called eWali from Google Play Store or Google App Store. Search for number 15, Miss Alice Rizal Kwe, and give me your support. I appreciate each and every one of you for your support so far. May God bless you all. Thanks. Alice, you really get traffism. I told you to speak Gribble to me, are you speaking? <laughs> <laughs> you speaking English, Lala, with PNG? <laughs> She used bow on you. You know, you started the thing so far. Uh, how you say it, eh? Fedeo. Uh -huh. And I say, oh, okay, okay, I'm going to hear something. Then she comes up with, you know, my name is Miss Quay. I represent Maryland What County. I said, I said portion of it in... Um, Everything should be in Gribble. Okay. 
But anyway, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> you know, most of, um, I think you did extremely well. Um, the fact that you can say hello to your people in uh, your local uh, vernacular is, is very important. But it's also important that we learn how to speak Thank our God. local dialects so that we um, represent ourselves in our countries anywhere, our counties anywhere. But thank you so much, um, uh, Ms. Kui, representing Maryland County. And we hope that you get the kind of support that you need to, um, you know, come out with uh, or in flying colors on the 23rd of July. July. Right. All the best to you and hope to see you after the the the, the, the Miss the Liberia, Liberia pageant, pageant <laughs> sitting right here face to face and talking yeah. about everything that uh, happened on that day. Mm -hmm. Best of luck. Thank you. Okay. Thanks so much for having me on your show. Okay, so let's take a short break. We will be right back with a review of the papers. This is Liberia Today. <laughs> You already know what time is it. It's time to review the papers, the papers, papers, papers. A lot in the papers today. Um, I have with me the independent newspaper, New Liberian newspaper, uh, Front Page Africa, Sami Michin Pepper newspaper, that's the hot pepper, the New Republic, and the Heritage newspaper. What do you have, Yiga? Well, I have the Democrat newspaper, the news newspaper, the public agenda newspaper, uh, the New Dawn newspaper, and the Women Voices. Okay, so we have on the front page of the independent newspaper, it says, yeah, 2023 elections in danger. Who's saying that Cummings raises alarm? Danger for what? And why? Grab a copy of this paper and read this story in detail. GT Bank dragged to court as court judgment favors Calando Petroleum. And I see... Uh, Kalando right here on the front page. Liberia, Israel, renew relations, a magnet for mutual rewarding and win-win benefits. Nangwe pushes more support for regional maritime university as Liberians score high marks at end of studies. Mm. So the back page of the independent newspaper, it says power struggle is never easy. We are assets reflects on CDC's revolutionary joining to state power. And I see the photograph of His Excellency Dr. George Manning Weir. And I'm sure this photo is from last uh, Saturday gathering when uh, Sedicians celebrated their 17th 
uh, anniversary. Liberia reaffirms support for WTO. That's the World Trade Organization. I see the Commerce Minister right here on the back page of the independent newspaper. Works Minister gets PhD for brilliant performance as MPW completes contract management training. Oh, so that is it. Unfinished business. We cannot finish this business. Youth must gain access to quality education. First Lady Wea asserts that will do it for the independent newspaper. Grab a copy of this paper and read the stories in detail. Here we are with the Democrat newspaper at the front page of the Democrat newspaper that says Power Stadmes Wea's second bid. And I see the photograph of His Excellency President George Weir on the front page of this paper. Low fat Senate campaign opens. Uh, we see uh, a flashback of our uh, electorates with their voter cards. I also see the headquarters of the National Elections Commission just on the front page of the uh, New Democrat newspaper. I'm taking you now at the back page of the uh, New Democrat newspaper where it says. George France on lawyers' tactics. For what? I see George Samin speaking during the ceremony. Uh, there are a couple of other judges just at the back page of uh, uh, the Democrat newspaper. Ivern refugees return home, and that does it for the New Democrat newspaper. Now to the New Liberia newspaper, which uh, says, Yeah. One, that's the motto, one nation, one people, one destiny. Uh, the front story says, from importer to exporter, it's in court. And a uh, high-level UAE delegation holds talks with President Wea on industrialized rice production across Liberia. Ooh, Senate, no raw fund money missing. This raw fund money business here, yeah, you're already confusing us now. We need to know what is really, really happening. One paper says this, another paper says the other. But the new library says, according to the Senate, no raw fund money is missing. James Edward Marshall, UMC owners, distinguished fathers. We're still in the month of fathers, right? Yes, June. Okay. U.S. professor in Liberia for career exchange with MCSS. And then I see also here performance report before confirmation is a question right here. Who are you asking, the public works minister or the Liberian Senate? The last time we were here on Tuesday, on Monday, sorry, where we saw that, you know, Snow, Edwin Snow, yeah, who is a senator, senator Snow, was yeah. insinuating yeah. that, you know, the Minister of Public Works was clear. Now we're hearing that the Senate is saying we want performance report. What kind of thing is that? Is well, that a new thing the senators <laughs> are requesting now, performance report? I, I don't know, but again, maybe the, the committee is trying to do its uh, due diligence to ensure that once you confront, uh, there will be nothing like, uh, and uh, maybe something that will store your word because, you know, there are a couple of rules. What is going to your work? Uh, maybe it's because, you know, she's, she, she was in position, she was confirmed, and she um, was holding yeah, another yeah, position now. The work she did before, they want, you know, public will speak, a performance uh, yeah. report on what she did before President Weir, you know, decided to give her that top level job. But that shouldn't be, uh, you know, a, much of a problem for. Ma Madam Collins, she has been doing a lot. Uh, her oh, work well. is visible, so that shouldn't be something that I don't think she would have known about it and not, you know, carry that. When you know, sometimes people like to say, and the audience or the public will always say that, you know, the the the, the, the elders sometimes when they are um, uh, in a position where people already know that they've done something, then they want to be a little bit hard because why will Senator Snow come up and say? This lady yeah, has a green, green leg. Light. Maybe yeah. after he said that, his colleagues did not like that, so they had to come up with something that will, you know, kind of delay the process again. Probably that could Let be the, the woman case. go. Mm. New Liberia, VP Tiller urges farmers to embrace mechanized farming. She's right here on the back page of the New Liberia newspaper. House reviews bill uh, granting PYJ, Polytechnic University status. 
there one university they have not granted its status? No. So there was a, a, a bill coming from a couple of lawmakers from Nima County and yesterday pointing to uh, giving the PYG uh, university uh, a status that will commensurate with her. Uh, you know, those who are in Nima so that they don't have that kind of traveling to Monrovia in pursuit of education. Okay. So you said UL Lunch Center for Teaching, Learning, Innovation. Uh, that would do it for the New Liberian newspaper. And here we are with the news newspaper just on the front page of the news newspaper on cold, no justice, no peace, says Judge Sami. And I see the photograph of uh, judges just on the front page of this paper. But the lead story here says, Twelve vindicated in U.S. 7 million rule form saga. I show this relative to what T.T. initially read from uh, the other local delay that uh, the Senate is saying there's no rule form missing. But you can grab a copy of uh, this paper to get the detail of what is embedded. Uh, we as aid found guilty. Who is this aid deputy uh, chief of protocol for President George Mane Weir, but uh, Cleopatra Cummings has been found guilty by a 12 men, uh, 12 panel jury at Criminal Court Aid at the Temple of Justice in Monrovia. Grab a copy. I know the detail. Let me take you at the back page of the news newspaper. Uh, farmers in Yekepa acknowledge AML support. Uh, Liberal passes ERT validation. Uh, dedicated police officer dies. Liberians express sadness. Well, yeah. our condolences. That police our officer, don't you know him? Uh, He's a well, well known see, police officer. I see his who, photograph here. Uh, have you not encountered uh, him before? No, he's this called uh, Officer Alfred <laughs> Bully. Bully yeah. yeah. This is one Why? police officer who has always been at the um, Vi Town, okay. um, um, you know, right at the roundabout. The bridge? Yeah, right at the bridge there, okay. but very dedicated and, you know, who carried himself as a true reflection wow. of the life of who a policeman police should be okay. yeah so this is somebody who connects with anybody who he comes wow. in contact with so the, wow. his pictures are making rounds on facebook <sighs> and Our yeah, condolences yeah, to yeah indeed the to the members. family yeah. of this very wonderful man neck receives joint resolution for lofa by election and that process is already ongoing because campaign activities I ongoing in Lofard County as we speak. Cummins takes, uh, takes issue with uh, government or failure to conduct censors. And I see the photograph of the political leader of the Alternative National Congress, Alexander B. Cummins. Uh, finally, credentials order to begin at UL. Others, what's about this? Grab a copy. Mm. So now to the front page of the Front Page Africa newspaper. It says, yes, yeah, Zogo's Rehabilitation Center money gone in teen air. It's a question that has been asked here. Uh, let me read a gist of it. Bombing citizens won L triple ROC youth and sports account for US 40K meant for the renovation of a career that is a center meant for disadvantaged youth. Zogo's rehabilitation center money going in thin air. What are they saying? I have not seen anything like work or rehabilitation center for young people, and there are no activities. Everything is down, and there is nothing there at all. People from the community are even presently living in the building. Laha Fambule, community youth person, uh, youth chairperson, is saying this. Grab a copy of this paper and read uh, this story. Three house rays as June 28 approaches Lofa by-election, shipping up to a three house race. That is what the Front Page Africa is reporting. Front Page Africa's analysis suggests that the outcome of the June 28 by-election will be influenced by a number of factors, including party structure, religion vote turnout and as voter turnout and geopolitical balance that is what this paper is reporting grab a copy of this paper and read the stories in detail uh to the back page is all about sports liberia amputee football election set for july 15. that will do it for the front page african newspaper
And here we are with the public agenda newspaper uh, at the front page, CDC Nears Redlined. Uh, parties, uh, magnetic power draining down, the people's revolution getting hostile. And I see the photograph of uh, His Excellency President George Weir, also the CDC party chairman, Moba Molu, just on the front page of the public agenda newspaper. Is that Liberia's? <laughs> the PL? <laughs> yeah, Liberia, uh, PL winner 2006-2007. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I told that they made it when I'm putting it down. Although we got another winner this year, but they're still carrying a 2006-2007 title. Public agenda. Mm. Yes. Uh, reflection on former President Taylor. That story can be read on page four. What's about uh, the reflection? Maybe you grab a copy. Let's move over to the back page of the public agenda newspaper. Terrorists running across borders. U.S. diplomat alarms. We all need to work together and uh, see the photograph of uh, uh, the U.S. Honor Secretary of State uh, for Political Affairs just on the back page of the Public Agenda newspaper. Renewed pressure on Minister Tue, Senator Dillon demands to mess the debt list. And I see the photograph of uh, the finance minister Samuel Tue, executive mansion unaware, Minister Cooper's corruption allegation ignored. You can grab a copy, but let's go for the hot paper, a uh, hot pepper newspaper. How hot is the Sami Minchin pepper this morning? Uh, the success story of NRF uh, amid rumors or numerous challenges, and I see Boniface right here. Um, the source of story, we this to <laughs> grab a copy of the hot paper newspaper and read the story, the success story of the NRF and made numerous challenges. It's right here. Mining firm Glenn's Core pleads guilty to UK bribery charges. Um, the editorial says CDC the 17th commemoration to the back page now of the hot paper newspaper. Uh, grateful. As a graceful Yekipa farmers acknowledge Asilomental Library support. Um, Dr. Sama predicts Lofa County by elections <laughs> outcome, says he is the people's choice. But who isn't going to do that if they are participating in an election? Dr. Sama um, forgot to register. He who he forgot said, to register at the last not, elections, and um, I don't know. But if he registered, that is one question we need to know about whether he registered now. Where is it in Lofa? Because they didn't have, did they have a, a registration, photo registration for these elections? Uh, <sighs> well, he's registered in Lofa now. How yeah, did they happened. have photo registration for these elections? I hope no, we, so, we but we, we, we have to we have to find, find out. Yeah, but he is saying out. that he he's predicting he's participating. So I, obviously he would say I'm going to win. Who's going to say if you don't say I am? Who is it that are? Uh, <laughs> so uh, President uh, we are extols, uh extolled for support to Ivorian refugees. And that would do it for the Sami Michin Pepper newspaper right here. The New Dawn newspaper is next. Cummins seeks help for 2023 census. Senator Moe latches out Senator Dillon, others. Uh, you don't know your legislative function, unquote. That's what Senator Moe is saying. But let's go to the back page of the New Dawn newspaper, Corruption Eating Away at Football in Tunisia. What's about this? We brought his sports, and so we go for the... New Republic newspaper. Okay, on the front page of the New Republic newspaper, I see comments here giving one bomb in Shanghai uh, face. <laughs> <laughs> uh, worst are yet to come. Then you see wow. Mr. Cummings right here. I don't know what worse is yet to come, but Mr. Cummings is right here on the uh, front page of the uh, uh, New Republic New newspaper. Republic newspaper. Honorable Samuel B. Taylor, Senator Grand Kipman County, is also right here. So I don't know whether Cummings and um, uh, Senator Taylor and Taylor are trying to say something to us, but to know what they're saying, you have to grab a copy of this paper and read the story here. AML inspires greening farmers' efforts for food security. Uh, to the back page of the New Republic newspaper. 
rise above any limits that impede progress. VP Howard Taylor tells CEUs, um, graduates, and so we see the um, vice president right here. She was the commencement speaker at uh, Cotton University, University. Uh, commencement program. A day with Anthony Wiese is right here. UL Faculty Association threatens boycott if, if what, as administration said to open on June 27. You want to grab a copy of this paper and read these stories in detail. My final stop this morning is just with the Women Voices newspaper on court with begged honorable Senate to take an honest look. Liberian women plead for Miss Ewen and Collins. And you see the photograph of the women. Um, mentally ill woman suffers in jail as general ministry appears unconcerned. What's about this development? Grab a what? puppet. Mentally ill woman suffers in jail as gender ministry appears unconcerned. Did she go to jail when she was mentally ill or she just, she was in jail and, and started, uh, you know, <laughs> you, you need acting to read, Larry. You, you need to read uh, or okay. grab a copy yeah. and, and, and read a detail. But later on we'll read that, uh, the test question I showed, something is on the screen now. But let me complete with the Women Forces newspaper at the back page of it. It says UL uh, CHS, a USAID launch medical academic hub at UL. Uh, FIU releases five-year national uh, strategic or uh, strategy and action plan today. Uh, NEC declares campaign open in Lofi as it announces receipt of joint legislative resolution. That did, uh, that does it for the women voices newspaper and so uh we yeah we're through. running out of time now we gotta go the heritage newspaper right here it says for paying salaries from national road fund finance minister tours claim uh, refuted liberia's development partners did not back gol you want to grab a copy of this paper to know exactly what they're saying that's what i keep saying the road fund money is you know from the senators to the um back to the government to the finance to the partners um, who's saying the truth grab a copy of all of the papers and you read different stories <laughs> concerning this one road fund i am guilty for killing john top man hmm. defendant please in open court Wow. Hmm. You want to grab a copy of this paper and read the story here in detail to the back page of the Heritage newspaper. Investigation lawyer's claim of diplomatic no denial turns out to be untrue. Investigation. The lawyer's claim of diplomatic no denial turns out to be true. And I see Grand Cru Senator Nimino Batikwa right here. Uh, you need to grab a copy of this paper and understand exactly what they're saying. Senate endorses report on road fund. Uh, Councillor Gonglo accelerates campaign, preaches good governance, accountability, and transparency. Uh, right here on the back page of the Heritage Newspaper. And that would do it for the Heritage Newspaper this morning. And a review of the papers in total. Let's see whether we have a winner this morning. We said to you that you should tell us the last segment on Liberia today. And let's see who's there. We have one person who is um, texting. Is that one text that we have concerning that? Or um, I'm, I'm getting info that we have, I think, about two texters, right? Let's see what the first person had to say. The last segment on Liberia today is the reading of the papers, the newspaper, Paul V. Mulva of ELBC Community. How will Paul not say that when we just read the, <laughs> <laughs> the, local dealers. the papers just now and he knows that we are rounding up, but that is not true, though. Let's see what the other person has to say. Mm, 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 mm. So what does the other person have to say? Good morning, my name is all these people. Good morning, my name is Prince D. Tutu. And the first segment on the show Who said the last? is speak with our correspondent like seriously. <laughs> mm. <laughs>
<laughs> we were not even asking about the first segment, and that is not even the first segment the on the winner. show. But the fact that you even took up your time to, you know, watch the show and participate, we'll appreciate you. But they're whacking it. We always want to give it out. But we'll be here on uh, Friday. Friday. Friday is, you know, a day that is set aside to recognize what, you know, public servants do. So on Friday, we have a lot in store for you. If you're a public servant and you're a good public servant and you're doing well in uh, the public sector, it's time for you to be celebrated. And so we will celebrate you uh, this coming Friday. But that will do it for today's edition of Liberia Today. Join us on Friday when we will be here with another edition. Thank you so much for being a part of this edition. My name is Titi Fukajibro. And I'm Rukwa Yega. Thanks for watching.